Hello out there at Astro World. Good evening, Tim. How you doing? Hey, Dan. Nice to see you again. Good evening, right. Astro World. All right. Um, and I think I got the uh, comments rolling. And I think we're good. We got we got starting now. We got seven people watching us right now. Very good. Hello, everybody. Good evening. And we're here tonight, Tim Cowell and I, and we're going to be talking, I believe, about how to choose your astrophotography target or what to do in different types of scopes and all that kind of stuff. Well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. What's, what's, well, how to, how to choose the, uh, you, you know us now, viewers, and you certainly know me, Dan. It's uh, the best laid plans of how to choose and um and what can happen along the way with your uh your, your wonderful astro target but um i've just taken a look out the back actually and uh it's a very clear night but it's also uh, rather rather over uh overblown by a uh, a, a big hazy moon so um i'm not i'm not set up an imaging tonight i hope to be are you dan no i'm not unfortunately we have uh some uh, some bad uh, weather coming through here. Uh, we mm. heard of a possible snowstorm in, in New York. Uh, oh, the, oh, it's coming at last. Uh, the inevitable snow. We don't know. Um, you know, it's like, uh, you know, if, if, if anything comes at all in New York, it's going to be gone the next day because it's going to be like 60 degrees the next day. Right. So um, right. That, that's, that's not really going to go anywhere. I don't okay. Think. <laughs> we did actually have a flurry here but it was one of those things living on a, a not but especially big hill i think most of you know um on, living on a bump so we we grazed the bottom of clouds and we did have a flurry but uh just like dan's uh situation gone gone in a flash and i i really am hoping it's spring now so i'm ready for the winter wash out as um as well it's gone hasn't it it's just drowned us so i'm i'm ready for spring now roll on shorter nights i'll take the compromise some shorter nights but some better nights i'll go for quality how about you dan yeah um, uh, well listen we in new york we've had a wonderful wonderful winter it's like it never even came right oh in terms of the, the, the yeah the temperature wise yeah, what yeah. about for astrophotography in terms of the um the conditions upstairs did, did it improve things for you uh, I'll, I'll use the uh, british term it was rubbish it was right. uh, the, the whole was winter trash. was rubbish garbage. it was hard. Oh, okay. it was garbage um, right. i just took, i took a look at my and I, i'm sorry i'm going back and forth i just want to make sure i'm getting any comments that we got going on here um it's all about the comments uh, no, nothing yet i'm just turning down the volume here on this so i can see the comments on everybody and um you know it's been pretty bad I, I was looking at some uh i've been working on the heart uh for a while yeah. and i finally busted out over 25 hours of data and Whoa. um yeah so yeah so but but you gotta remember now <laughs> i started that project november 1st well, oh yeah yeah we touched on this last week and i've forgotten what which is we we, we did say didn't we that uh, it's a huge effort we can't take away in actual fact it makes it a bigger effort to get those 25 hours but that's not strictly how we want to be playing it we want to be racking up 25 hours in i don't know a week yeah yeah that would be nice <laughs> that would mm. be nice mm. uh, but but unfortunately uh that's not what happens mm -mm. and i just want to make sure one more thing before we start getting on our topic here mm -hmm. And uh, the dashboard seems live. Okay. Hi, everybody. Jump, jump in with your comments. We're talking about targets. What makes you choose a target? What makes a good target? I think I know. Um, what makes a poor target in relation to perhaps your scope of conditions? Uh, I made some preparations a while back thinking in my naivety that I would actually get uh, a messy marathon done one day. So I wrote down the like you do you wrote down the the um hundred or so how many how many are they, did they decide oh, oh i've lost the page oh page has fallen out when he got to 84 <laughs> i'm missing i'm missing a page there's 120 something or other isn't there think, messier well, well, messier objects which list you're looking at i i know uh, well there's there's 110 
Messier objects. Um, right, 110. Depending okay. on if some lists go up to 112 because it's like kind of two in one and you know, so, you know you're like m51 some people like use the other galaxy as another one or you know ah uh, right well you know. put right i've written some of these down where this is so train spotting i love it <laughs> well put right m51 whirlpool galaxy yep absolutely so right start the start there so is that one or two targets down so now, now I've, I've learned something so that's two targets then uh, yes, it's it is. technically two targets, yeah, because you have two different galaxies, absolutely. Right. Uh, but, I mean, if you're really going to take a picture of the Whirlpool galaxy, you gonna, are you going to cut one of those galaxies out? I don't know. <laughs> no, that's not one I'd frame out, actually. Let, not, let me just not crop it out. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, do like, I'll do like one of these. Hold on, ready? Right? There you go. I'll, I'll do like one of these. Um, right? <laughs> I, I got to mess with you a little bit. There you go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like one of these, mm. and then I, I'll crop, I'll crop half you out like that. How can you do it? That's M51 by itself, and then when you do M51 all together, then it kind of looks like, uh, kind of like, like that now. So now, <laughs> yeah, the full tortoise. So, so now, now you know, yeah. So I actually have a um, a thing on here, and um, what do we got? We got some people that have joined Nicole, Nicole, who has had some issues with some of her guiding. Um, hey, Nicole. Uh, she is actually in from your neck of the woods. Um, oh. And uh, Greg Straub joined. I haven't seen Greg in a while. He's from my neck of the woods. He's actually from my hometown of East. Oh, well, I won't say where my hometown is <laughs> but uh but um somewhere east <laughs> um but um i i do have and i'm gonna take us both off the uh the webcast for a minute and i i hope you could see this on your dashboard um do you have the do you have the live feed going on facebook what are you watching right now are you watching the uh i i watch it i watch our rendezvous concert okay so yeah 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 i'm not i'm not gonna get smart on this mate i'm just gonna sit still and touch nothing all right so if you take a look at this oh get know. in oh it's this the world often often traveled place yeah so this uh if for those of you guys who don't know this um, this is uh, Astro Astronomy Tools, and they have a bunch of different calculators mm. on here. Um, and Tim, I don't know if you know of this calculator. You know oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This gets uh, plenty of hits from me, got to say. Yeah, so, I mean, this, there's another one out there. I want to say it's Dark Black Sky or Blackwood Skies. I, I forget what it was, but the, I think it's in the UK. It's a .UK site. Oh, okay. Um, okay. B BBC Sky at Night has a, a basic version okay. of of the thing. This is the one, I must admit, this is my go-to um, field of view calculator. And yeah. also, being forgetful and just rubbish at numbers in general, this is, um, they have a CCD calc suitability. So oh, when I forget yeah, we'll my... we'll get to that too. Yeah, well, gotcha. absolutely. Gotcha. Ah, Right, yeah, right, those, those, I think that. those two are the the most used ones on there, and there's even a, mm. I want to say there's a the, what is it the um the image scale calculator, but I don't use this one usually. I use another one. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, uh, but I, I use think this they call it C CCD suitability calculator, and they've got a um, a green to red yeah, kind right. of scale horizontal bar that tells you whether you're whether your CCD or your CMOS is suitable. You ah, there you look, there's the man. There you go. So, so yeah, this I use quite a bit, especially, and uh, right. if, I, if I'm a little haggard, you got to understand, I just got done working at the telescope store today, and I kind of right. rushed here to get, you know, <laughs> to yeah, get. But so um, we use this actually quite a bit when uh, customers actually come in and ask, ah, is this camera going to be good for this scope? Yes. So you can tell whether you're undersampled. You know, you're getting those nice, blocky, ugly-looking yes. stars that you got to spend hours transforming into round stars. Mm. Or, you know, you got oversampled, which not necessarily is a really bad thing. If you're slightly oversampled, you could deal with that. 
Um, yes. But if you're oversampled to the point where you're bleeding out on all the pixels around you, then that's uh, obviously a, a, a different story, I it's, would think. It's the lesser of the two evils, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of like, uh, I guess, um, if you're out of focus, there's only so much you could do with an out of focus picture. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha, so, gotcha. Yeah, I see. Right, that's an interesting way of putting it. Right, good one, Dan. Um, you're never going to get it back into focus. Just like a star, sure. if you got a, a square star, you could actually get it round, but how many stars do you really have in that picture that you want to mess with? No. Uh, <laughs> you yeah. got thousands yeah, of stars probably. in there. You know, Probably so, not many. So anyway, back to the field of view calculator. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm back on that. Yeah, I'm back on the field of view calculator. I'm seeing if there's any comments. There's no comment. Oh, Natasha says hello. Hi, Natasha. Hi, Natasha. How are you? Hope your night is going well. And then we got, okay, so here's the field of view calculator. Now, the really good thing about this field of view calculator is um that you could choose an object right yes you could choose a telescope and it's got a lot of predetermined telescopes it's got a lot of stock telescopes in its database pre um, yeah and uh you know the, right now we're on the visual mode um which a lot of us uh, uh, you could still use it for visual mode for eyepieces and stuff like that but mm -hmm. if you go to the second tab to the imaging mode now you could do the same thing, but it also with your ca instead of eyepieces, it's asking for your camera, and it knows the resolution of your camera because it's built in. Um, and if you're using a Barlow reducer, you put that in. If you're binning, whatever it is, and yeah. you throw that in there, and it will show you on the, underneath, and will show you a, a picture of how big your chip is with that object. Yes. So Tim, pick, pick an object, Tim. Oh, well, let's, what's our favorite? Well, we like our smaller scopes, don't we? How so about... You're, you're, pick a big scope with a small focal length. How about that? Oh, a big scope with... I'm, let's, sorry, I'm sorry, a big object with a small focal length. A big object, a big object with a short focal length. Correct. Big, big with short, big with short. Please, may we try a red cat... I think that's populated in there then let's try a let's red if, cat let's see if william optic red cat is in there go all the way down to w williams optic zenith star guides go red right, cat. There, there we go red cat okay let's try the red cat so let's try the shortest focal length with the big with a big object what do you think what about um m 16 Ooh, eagle okay. eagle nebula see if it see if it's got an eagle nebula yeah, in course. there yeah it does and uh, what kind of camera do we use oh oh are we rich or poor dan let's say we're let's say we're poor right now are we called or uncalled dan well, are we poor and uh, uncalled no, well, no, I, well you know this really unfortunately this really doesn't really matter if you're called or not with this Oh, no, that's true. It doesn't, does it? Well, I guess, yeah, I, I suppose it does rule out certain cameras, but let's go. Should we go mainstream and go for a, uh, what would someone, have? a 294, how's that? 294, all right. We'll a color, a color 294. Yep. All right, so we got M16 with the William Optic Red Cat and 294, and as you can see, the uh, focal length is preloaded. The size of your aperture is preloaded. Your your chip array size is preloaded, and your pixel size is preloaded. On the bottom, you see your, what your focal ratio is because that's what it is for the red cat. It's four point nine. It'll give you a ha what kind of resolution you're getting per pixel and your field of view. So it knows Very all this important. stuff. So it's sliding down to the bottom and add to view. If we hit add to view. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow. Okay, so you can see from this that you have plenty of room, even if you wanted to kind of frame this a little bit better, you could see an NGC object right above it, right over here. We, you could shift that, couldn't you? Both. Mm. Or you even get it on the diagonal. 
I tell you what, let's say um, I, I, maybe maybe it does do it, maybe it doesn't. I don't think it does. It would be nice if you could swivel that around because I don't think you can. Don't think no, it does. Well, I certainly don't do. don't know it's how a web, to do it. Web browser, so I mean, this is just. Oh. Sure, you get what you get. But wouldn't it be nice if you could just twiddle that? I I sort of judge it by eye, but I can see there that um, with a little bit of rotation, that red cat has a rotator yep. uh, inbuilt. You could twiddle that and get that on the diagonal, and then maybe do some creative cropping. But I would probably get that on the diagonal myself and get both of them in. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know what? You don't need a rotator in order to do that. All you really need to do is. Turn your camera a little bit, and if you got a focuser that turns, right? I do you know what I have. Um, I have a, a, a telescope at the moment that doesn't have a quite a big or medium sized telescope, and it doesn't have a rotator. And it's it's quite an interesting that you've said that. Uh, and the school of thought is that if you add a rotator, you've got the potential for adding. It's another area where you've got tilt. In your yeah, train, that is and true. and so you don't want a purist would not want a um, see a, yeah. So I'm I'm confused. Back to back to school again, Dan. So the the purist says um, don't add anything unnecessary into your train. Take take the whole focus rotator. Don't don't take a little graduated rotator. So what are your thoughts there? Uh, I actually I actually do have a rotator on mine. Um, mm. I got the uh, mm. the combo, um, the moonlight with the the automated focus or automated rotator, all from Ron at Moonlight. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, Big Ron. I I love it. I mean, I don't have to do anything. My my rig right now is so it's amazing mm. how I don't come mm. out with more photos more often because right. of my rig is so automated right now. I can literally <laughs> sleep, and you know I still got that kind of angst that i get you know with wires I, i've had i've been burned too many times with wire snag and things falling where they shouldn't be and stuff like that when you leave things alone what's you know? what, right so wire snag yeah we all have that and i know you've got an eagle as well as an option so that doesn't eliminate it reduces some no. of the some of the anxiety but what is it what fears do, do you leave i stay up my I'm very blessed. My rig is in a back garden, in a shed in a back garden with a nice. removable roof. And my the bit where I'm sitting now, um, just behind those curtains, is a little conservatory that leads out to it. So I'm probably 20 feet away from it. It's the, it's the, the least requirement for a remote setup, 20 feet away. You could possibly imagine it's the laziest man set up, but the, <laughs> so so the fear I have so and I've got an eagle and the wire snagging is re anxiety is reduced. So I fear the weather. There's always another fear comes along to replace your last one. So I fear the weather being in the UK. So that was a long long winded way of saying: Do you worry of it? Do you actually sleep? when you're imaging, do you go and retire to bed? Do you song cry out that? Because because I don't. I, I sit here. I, I'll, be, I'll be here, you know, sort of chair surfing the, yeah. the whole session. I, I won't know, go to bed. I have not. When I go to bed, my telescope goes to bed with me. I mean, I gotcha. go outside. I unpack because I don't have the luxury of, of any sort of permanent setup. I set up and right. break down every night. Uh, right. I'm, I'm getting to the point though where I just park the scope put a cover over the scope if it's going to be a couple of nights in a row where it's it's clear interesting. nights interesting. And I'll, yeah. I'll take the scope off the mount and I'll just bring the scope on but I'll leave the mount where it is polar aligned and everything and even though it does sink a little bit because it's, I'm on grass um, gotcha but you it, could fix that the next night I guess couldn't you to tweak yeah, the polar aligned yeah, but it takes like two seconds because you're really yeah. going to be close. And yeah. the, 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 the sharp cap polar alignment routine is just... Ah, can I, can I report back? I know we're supposed to be talking about targets. We'll get, we'll get to it. We'll, we'll get to it. Um, <laughs> sharp cap, sharp cap polar align. My pole master has been in a carry case since using the sharp cap 
polo line routine. Yeah, mine too. Wow. Wow. Yours too. Yep. That's interesting. Mm. So do you, it's very good, isn't it? It's shockingly good. It's awesome. And it's, it's a lot easier, believe it or not, than the Pole Master. And, you know, I bought the Pole Master really, I want to say, before the ZWO cameras came out. It was right, okay. it was right before. It was right, ZWO mm -hmm. cameras came out, I want to say, and I could be wrong, uh, but I want to say it was about, about three months difference. Right, right. Um, Mark Ellis says hi. Uh, hey, hello, Mark. World. He's still uh, yeah, using your, his Pole we're, Master. We're doing your mug, mug. We're getting your mug sorted. Winner, Mr. Ellis. Uh, I already yelled at Mark. I said, go drink it. Go drink your, your, your cup, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's in the it's in the post party. He hasn't he nice. hasn't we're not we're not that quick here. <laughs> nice. Um, but uh, I, I forgot. I'm sorry. I forgot where I was going. I was watching the uh, the comments. We, um, so I, I'll, I'll beg your pardon. I, I interrupted. We we, no, were, I forgot. we were we were cruising down the road of um, of doing our favorite thing of uh, of digressing. <laughs> Banter. <laughs> we were we were, di we, we were digressed. We I tell you what, I know where we were originally. We were on M sixteen, weren't we? But we don't we know how M16, we got to where we are now. So. <laughs> we have no idea where we, we got. Get, to. Oh, Shark Cap! That's where we got to. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> Shark yeah. Cap and been in a pole master. Yeah, two hundred and fifty quid. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, yeah. So my my pole master, the same as yours. I actually gave it to Jeff at the store at, at Camera Concepts um, to go man. sell it. <laughs> ah, really, really. Yeah, so I said, I said, I don't need it no more. I got my uh, ZWO. I, I, it, it does double duty as a guide cam and my polar right. alignment scope. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We like that. We like and the two. I'm, yeah, getting two, getting two, two, uh, two lots for our money. So yeah, that's that. That's where we were. Where, where were we? You were. Um, yeah. You, you got rid of your pole. You, you got. Yeah. Yeah. Your pole master's gone. He said, I'm losing it now. This, I'll tell you what, we have digressed to, yep, uh, so, so yeah, so we're probably digressed to, uh, to <laughs> Sharp Cap's call. Yeah, we don't, and it's 10, and it's 10 pounds. What's it over there? 10 bucks, 10 yeah, bucks a year for front. It's 10 pounds also. So they do the conversion. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so whatever it is, it's $12 or whatever, $13, yeah, 13, about $13. You know, so I mean, not too, not too but $13. Yeah. And Robin who does Sharp Cap, um, who writes everything? He's a one-man team that does everything, and right. you know he, he gets he gets input from a lot of people. Uh, right. But he does an awesome job for doing what he does and how often he puts out updates. I mean, I gotta say, yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very. What what a smart cookie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, and I, I'm gonna digress a little bit more in a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, excellent. Um, Cheers, everyone. And Paz, I, I by know. the way, 21st of March. Oh, yeah. And, and, oh, and by the way, for the, those of you guys yeah, that are going to Neef as well, since we're on the subject of astronomy shows, hmm. Neef came out with a press release yesterday. Uh, yeah. Regarding the coronavirus and what's really? going on and everything. And for those of you guys that remember last year, that went last year, um, they had a massive, massive measles outbreak last year. Oh really? Right in their town, right in yeah. Rockland County. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, Listen. and they didn't cancel for that. Um, okay. So what they did do, but they realized how serious this is as far as the transmissibility of, of the virus, um, that all of the outside of the U.S. companies that usually have representatives at NEF will still be representative at NEF. But they will only be using U.S. reps, local not, reps, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I saw some of that. Sorry, I thought my I thought my stream had died for a minute there, Dan. I was, no, I was riveted, and uh, and uh, I I froze. Right, okay. So they're using local reps. That makes sense, doesn't it? Although yeah, so it is a bit safe. sad because there's the characters from the. Um, you know, the MDs and the designers of some of these products you want to see. You know, we want to see William Yang, we want to see Dr. Filippo, we want to yep, see yep. these people. 
there are I mean, stars and heroes, so that's kind of, that's a bit sad, isn't it? However, that makes sense, doesn't it? Local reps, okay, can live with that. Better than no show. Exactly. So, I mean, and there was a ton of people there also, even though that they had sanitizer and everything all there with the measles outbreak uh, last year. But, I mean, there's always, all right, we got a big, we got a big note from Nicole right here. Um, hey, Nicole. Shears, guys, Cloudy here in Scarborough, UK. That's oh, right. Oh, well, you're north. You're, you're north to me, right? It's clear here, but the moon's wrecked it. Sorry to hear that. What have you got for us, Nicole? Um, we might take our Skywatcher 200P out tomorrow. Big. Uh, that's okay. That's okay, Nicole. Um, Big. Stellarium does something like this, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, the field of, yeah. The, yeah I'm, you know what? Yes, I don't really, I don't really use Stellarium a lot. I, I was a, I guess, you know, it was either Beatles or Elvis or Star Wars or Star <laughs> Trek and, and then there was the sky and Stellarium. So, so yeah, I was, yeah, I was yeah. the sky guy. Oh, you and went I, with the sky. What yeah, do you, I, what do you use now? You would, you would see, Scott the seal. Can't I don't do see. anything. I played solve everything. So, <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. You know, but um, I, there, there are. I use Sky Tools, which I use a lot. Um, right. You know, I still use my old. I, I got the Sky Six. I don't even have ten. I, I had four and six, and now I got. Uh, you know, I, that's all I have for that. But I haven't used that in a while. Um, well, on that point with Stellarium and uh, and. Uh, and picking targets, I actually use Stellarium uh, for the field of view to an extent. Once I've had a look in uh, the field of view calculator, um, but also because it's pretty. So I use Carter Seal for controlling the telescope. Um, but when I'm scouting around looking for stuff, I use Stellarium's interface. Uh, because it helps me map out my limited field of view here. Uh, sorry, not field of view as in telescope, as in um, range between the trees and the, the houses. Um, so my, my opportunity, of my window of opportunity, I guess. So Stellarium is really good for that. Uh, but it's also nice and fast. I find Carter Seal a bit sticky on the old mouse, uh, mm -hmm. zooming in and out. So Stellarium is really useful for whizzing in and out and going, Hey, this could be really nice for these two hours, and this could be really nice for that. So, Stellarium, I really rate, but I have failed miserably to ever connect my telescope to it. So that's okay. the that's, Otherwise, I would probably, well, I, I say probably, I might use it for controlling the telescope, but I don't understand how it does go tos. I mind you, I don't understand how Cart the Seal does go tos, but I do understand how to connect my telescope to it. Click on a blob say go to it say slew and and off it goes yeah, and make I, a pointing I, model and that sort of stuff yeah i'm not sure about slam again i use the sky the sky was very easy to even though i think you know the sky unfortunately you pay for uh, i think it was like right. 99 bucks right uh, but um at least that's what it was that's Why what not? it was when the six came up now it's like 240 or something for the right. sky I 10. See. i see um uh, mark ellis says he's he used it scared me for a second. He says he uses the CDC, so yeah. I took me took me a while to think about it's Carts du Ciel and not the Carts CDC, it. the the Centers for Disease Control in the United States. <laughs> so, so I'm like, I'm yeah. like, oh my god! I'm like, what, what, what's going on? I said, Mark, please tell, tell me you're not sick. <laughs> but um, and uh, George Lutch said, uh, Telescopius, which I've heard of, hey, it's George. a wonderful way of planning uh, planning your targets, and there is. Uh, Scar Star Starkeeper Voyager, which has also a field of view and mosaic wizard as well. Telescopius. Yep. And and Voyager. Uh, Starkeeper Voyager. Starkeeper. And that's got a field of view mosaic wizard as well. So. Right. Um, nice one. Thank you very much. I've yeah. taken those. Absolutely. Um, Nicole's is saying, "Cheers, guys! Check the other programs out. They also use Nikon Backyard for controlling the the uh, the setup." Yeah, good luck. So, good luck tomorrow night. Yeah, Nikon Backyard. I I did. Uh, oh right, yes, yes, of course. Sorry, sorry. That's my. That's uh, I. Uh, yeah, Nikon. 
Nikon yeah, back Nikon. Yard. Yeah, Nikon. Sorry. Nikon. <laughs> Nikon. No, it's a much better way of it's a much better way of pronouncing it. I'm slightly having worked in America, I'm slightly Americanized. So Dan and I will say CWO, but English people insist on calling it Z W O. Yeah, Z. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The only Z that I know is from Pulp Fiction and he didn't do too well. <laughs> so, so all i know is that z stands for red camera so that's yeah. all i know yeah yeah <laughs> but um if you want to go back and again I mean, something else with the astronomy tools i just thought about mm -hmm. since we're i'm going to switch the camera over uh to the to the website again so so with the astronomy tools oh, yeah. um site the good thing about this is that if you want to compare um Oh, sure. another telescope. Yeah, so let's say... Or camera. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Let's, let's say you wanted to put my camera, even though it might be a little bit heavy for a red cat, but let's say you wanted to put my camera on there. And I got an S-Big, so we'll go to the S-Bigs, and I think it's on there. S-Big... Um, where is it? 8300M, there it is. So we're going to change the S-Big, and it changed the resolution, change the pixel size, and you can click Add to View. So you can see that my S big in yellow is a little bit smaller very than the 294 chip. Very close, isn't it? Yeah, it's very, very, very close. And you got to remember very also close. that uh, the um, the S big is CCD, the ZWO is CMOS. Yeah. A little yes. bit different as far as the technology is concerned. Yes, and different um, pixel size. I can't quite uh, read the screen from here. Yeah, so the uh, pixel size for the um, for the uh, S big was five point two, and I think the uh, two ninety four is like three point eight, if I remember right. Mm. Um, okay. Let's see, two ninety four. Why is it going number order on here? You know what? There, two ninety four. I'm sorry, it's four point six. So okay. my pixel size is a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, but that's the chip's a little bit smaller. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, that's quite close. So let's take a look at and this is what I show people when when you know and and I, before I start with this, um, I'm not against Schmidt Cassegrains as it may No, be. no, of course we're not. For for the past couple of videos, I think we've been bashing Smith Schmidt's yeah. um, and for fun. Yeah, the, you know what? Schmidt Cassegrains are awesome. Overall, the the best of both worlds kind of scope. Well, as an all rounder, as an yeah. all rounder for your money, for everything. If you included, if you were going to include planetary and lunar in there, then yes, most definitely. And and I guess looks and kudos and wow factor as well. Then most definitely. No, we we've, we've we've got to have some fun. Uh, We've got to have some fun bashing the collimators and the floppers. <laughs> yeah, and the well, people who are permanently in the shifts. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the shifts. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, it, it's definitely, you know, if you're doing... Um, Depends what you're doing, doesn't it, Dan? Yeah, if you're doing planetary and you need that super long focal length mm -hmm. to get to bring out those lovely barges on jupiter or Ooh. or you know the if on a really really good dark night in a place where i've never seen but the f ring of saturn if you want to bring that out Ooh. um you know visually i don't know about i've never seen it on a camera shot but i you know i, I have seen it visually from a really 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 dark sky um I, actually i saw it at uh, let's see the only time i actually saw it was once in cherry springs Oh, that, do you know what? That sounds such probably the nicest place to go and have a star party I, I've ever heard. It's the, um, it's not the aesthetic. Can you have the aesthetic of the world? It just, I don't know. It just sounds to be like a very, very beautiful place to go and do a bit of um, uh, sort of astro. Yeah, it's, it's, an, it's a nice place. <laughs> Mark Ellis wants to see the sea monkeys on Neptune. Uh, but um, <laughs> okay. um, how late is it there mark <laughs> I, I, I might be able to I, see them in an hour yeah really <laughs> <laughs> um but uh you know it's it's like you, you need that long focal length and i was talking to a guy mm -hmm. and I, you know 
And again, we're we're bouncing back and forth here with with uh, with uh, stuff. I was t we were bouncing back and forth between a 180 Mac and a nine and a quarter Schmidt. And oh, okay. Back and forth okay. Between 2700 meter focal length on a Mac, whatever, 24 or 2500 on the nine and a quarter. Not What's a lot. The difference? It, yeah, not not a massive amount in it. Isn't isn't the Mac? less it's not cheaper isn't it less expensive up front oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. the the 180 That's, that would swing here sky watcher uh set up mark says it's 7 30 and my buddy eddie who we keep on saying my buddy eddie, my buddy eddie lives fairly close to cherry springs and yeah. oh. I've, never, I've never met him <laughs> okay. I've never, okay. I've, I've never met him, and we've made plans three years, I think now, to go to Cherry Springs and hook up in Cherry Springs and finally get together and say, "Hey, what's up? It's me." <laughs> and it has not happened. And so he just posts. He's like, "Cherry Springs is beautiful unless if it's raining, and it usually is." Uh, oh. <laughs> you know, oh. it's it, it's you're in a valley kind of, and you think that that would kind of protect. From the elements, kind of. I see. But it really okay. doesn't. It becomes a, a. They get bad fog storms. Right. Does it settle in there like a yeah. little microclimate? Oh, how rude! So. Oh, um, how like a little magnet of sat of. Yeah, mm. it's it, it's really you know it's it's the usually the one in uh, September. Mm. Um, oh, oh, perfect they have time. Two. They have two. They have one in June, and that's the Cherry Springs Star Party. And they have yeah. one in September, uh, the Black Forest Star Party. Both are in the same place. Both are in Cherry Springs. Um, they say that there is approximately 86 good days there per year, apparently, I'm being told. <laughs> so, 80, 86, so, as so many as that. Yeah, so two-thirds of the year complaining. is complete rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you're lucky to be there on the one of the 86 days mm. I, I, I guess you're good but you gotta remember from October to probably about March the place is not even accessible from it's the snow oh, oh really yeah is, I wouldn't it, go is it high is it high yeah well, it's about 2300 feet it's not that high that's quite, but, well, that's quite high. But, okay, that's you know. But as far as I know, I know high. some people that have gone up eight, nine thousand feet for observing. I don't know if they did it right. with an oxygen tank high. or nothing, but uh, that's <laughs> high. Yeah, yeah that so, would that would puff me out. I would eight eight thousand feet would uh, start to affect me. I would think. Yeah, Good I've Lord. never been. I've never been that high unless. We, well, I'm not gonna say it, but <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, you know, it's 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 really good you either have really stellar superior nights in cherry springs yeah. or you have one off like you'll have one night out of the weekend and then what's if you're from me and i'm from long island and you're driving out to the middle of pennsylvania um that's a six and a half hour drive do you really yeah. want to take that six and a half an hour drive for one night to go there yeah 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 i hear you it's a long, it's a big investment, isn't yeah. it? Big commitment, especially when there's nothing else there. There's there's a little town called Cowdersport over there, right. which has like a bar and a pizza place, and that's about it. That's a long, yeah. long way to go for pizza. Yeah, I got, I got good pizza on Long Island. I got better pizza on Long Island <laughs> than you have in, in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, Eddie. Better pizza on Long Island, Eddie. <laughs> so, um, but uh, you know, so so. Let's see. So, what else do we got as far as well? What about what about schools of thought as far as telescope versus target? Right. I always get things wrong because <laughs> I always do. I always rush into it, and I'll I'll go with what I am uh, fed by what's drifting into my window of opportunity, I'll, I'll, so to speak. Um, and so I'll take something that comes into that window of opportunity, generally speaking, something that I either haven't imaged before, which is fun, but fraught with learning difficulties, or I'll go with something that I ha have imaged before, 
but and but that gets tedious and boring because I'll find myself back on Andromeda again and again in a in a Andromeda Groundhog Day. Um, well, that's why you Jesus. got that awesome picture, though. You weren't right. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's yeah, very true. I suppose the ones in your Groundhog Days—that's that's an interesting. Uh, but you should say that, yeah, being stuck on that and and using for some weird reason of timing, Andromeda's come up over and over again for me when testing, when doing review stuff or testing a new scope, or it's just been the only viable object, and so I've done it to death. And got quite used to to its vagaries and range. Actually, just looking when when you brought up um, on the field of view calc uh, with the Eagle Nebula, it was another nebula just hang, hanging outside of the field of view. And looking at that straight away, I was mm -hmm. looking and thinking that's a lot of dynamic range. That's a very very bright one and a very very dim one. So actually, I'm going to flip that back to you because you're better at this sort of stuff. How would you set up? Because I know what to do with Andromeda now. So it's got a bright bit and dim bits. That's, mm. that's, I've got that, got that under the belt. But with the Eagle Nebula, for instance, um, in that example, how would you go about a very, very bright bit with a very, very dim bit? So I suppose that counts for Orion too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, then then you're starting to get into different exposure times, I would guess. Right. Okay. Um, you know, because everybody knows the first thing that anybody, including myself, has taken a picture of usually first is either the Andromeda Galaxy or the Orion Nebula. And that's what people do. It's kind of like, I don't know, for, the, for the, you musicians out there, if you're a bass player like me, every single bass player learns smoke on the water by deep purple first <laughs> and that's what everybody learns and it's you know that that's what they learn it's the easiest baseline to hear that or running with the devil by van halen I and mean, that that's right. it it's it, very simple stuff something right. that you can see something that you can do fast and get some decent yeah. results even if you don't really know what you're doing yet yes um, it's good instant gratification but from a purist point of view getting the range in because this is the, the thing, so that's where I'm, I'm alluding to your higher level of skill, the high dynamic range picture, because that's what they really are. They, yeah. They're not easy ones to, to start with, are they, really? No, because you know what? This is what happens, especially when you're doing something with either a bright center, like the trapezium in, in, the, uh, in uh, Orion, or uh, yeah, the, never the galaxy it. Never core. Done it you know, you know, but now... Oh. If you take a look, I believe Chuck Ayub put a nice little video trick on how to kind of HDR it. And uh, oh, yeah, that's it. Okay. It's, it's not as good as doing um, different exposure times and layering them using masks. And if Is that actually... what you do then? So you would take 30 seconds, a minute, mm -hmm. two minutes, five minutes, and then process them as separate pictures, and then what would you do? do put lay, layer them together. Yeah, and layer them together, and you kind of right. mask them in there, and you would protect. You would protect the bigger one, then protect the next smaller one, then protect the next smaller one, and layer right. them on top of each other. And then you right. would all of a sudden start seeing four, maybe six stars in the trapezium, as opposed to what you would normally get when you're taking a picture and you're doing that one shot where the trapezium is just blown to hell. <laughs> And, you know, you may as well That's just put a match in the <laughs> middle of your flame. You know? <laughs> yeah, and, my one. Uh, you know, we've all done it. It's either that or, you know, you get you get this little kind of flat U when you get the Orion Nebula. It's like this, 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 and then this. And maybe you'll see a couple of out-of-focus stars in the middle. I you know? see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But, yeah. but you really want to get... Uh, the trapezium, the stars of, of them by itself, and that center nebulosity, then yes. start building out, and then building out to the wings, and then start kind of ah, right. all together. Do you know what? I might approach that in a different way than the, the next time um, Orion's behind. Uh, I, I probably won't get it at all this season now, which is really quite upsetting for a, a, yeah. an old man to miss out a whole other season on... on uh, you, you're, you're talking about me, right? 
<laughs> no, I'm not talking about you, Seller. <laughs> I, I've, I've, mi- I've missed it again. I'll have a, I'll have a final swing at it this week. Mo- Moon's defeated me tonight, but I'll have a final swing at it. But um, I think what I'm going to do, having, having just went to you, I'm gonna, I might try doing something like 15 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, two, and some longer ones, and then build my picture up from the 15 second subs. I'm going to try and build it up from trapezium rather than start with the the mess, the, yeah. the, 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 the bucket of paint tipped out on the floor, which is where I normally start and then yeah. boost everything up. And, and it's, it's just, just horrible, isn't it? It's the classic, the classic amateur mistake with uh, Orion is to overdo everything, isn't it? It's subtle, I think. Sure. I Perhaps mean, you, know, the way. you definitely want to get the parts that you really want to showcase. So, right. like, you know, if you want to showcase the core of the Andromeda galaxy, mm-hmm. you're going to you're gonna need something that doesn't blow it out. Because, you know, yes. but you also want to get those nice dark lanes, too. And the only way to get those nice mm. dark lanes, as you know, is to little, take a longer exposure. A little bit more time on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, no, it is, it is, a, it is a tricky one. It's... Um, it's an, it's an, it just became very useful and I can find it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of the ones that, um, even, uh, um, star hopping I can find. So I'm quite, I'm quite proud of my limited star hopping ability. Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's what I must ask you, Dan. How's your star hopping, your naked eye? Horrible. Put, put, Point of, oh, really? Oh. Really? Oh, it can't, it can't be as bad as we can't be oh. worse. I can probably do about 15 minutes talking and pointing and I don't get around once. I, I could do that. I mean, I could, I could, you want me to show you the Ring Nebula? I could show you the Ring Nebula. You want me to right. Show you ah, the, right. That's good, right. Galaxy, I'm, blown, I'm blown away already. You know, but, but don't ask me to find you where the dumbbell is because the dumbbell right, no, is in this. That random place with no stars it's really hard to find for me (laughs) i'm I'm not very good with that because i haven't i haven't really done much visual in the last i would say probably about seven to ten years right um you know i've been doing strictly astrophotography for the most part if i'm doing visual i'm usually doing outreach for some person or club or whatever that right. you know, you know, and at that point, I, I usually just come with my 18 inch obsession, I just blow it down, and then I show them, you know, show them the cool stuff, you know. The, uh, yeah, and that yeah. has a go to tour facility, doesn't it? Uh, it does, but unfortunately, on an 18 inch, when you got kids around, probably not that safe, right? <laughs> you, know, right. You, know, you know, literally, he's gonna knock kids over. I mean, <laughs> you know, right. I've seen oh, it so what do you do? Set it and leave it on a object and then let people sort of you yeah. know yeah, without yeah. i see yeah and yeah. i'll have a sign nice. up front it'll say now showing and or whatever and you know and then i'll right. take another sign i'll choose when i move to another object i usually get a list you know i usually get the you want to, when you're doing outreach i know we're doing a little craziness over here when you're doing outreach with uh, a bunch of people or kids or parents of kids and stuff a lot of people are there people want to see the wow factor yeah and yeah they're I not bet. gonna want to see um m101 let's say even though it's an 18 inch scope that thing yeah. is a small fuzzy little mess yeah 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 they'll be like oh that's cool but that's all you're gonna get but if yeah. you show them you know the the red spot on jupiter live in an mm. 18 inch mm. like, oh man did you see that oh that's awesome oh that's great and whatever and you know you know or you start showing them with a with a you know, hey, that's Titan. That's a Saturn's moon. You know, or, or yeah, something like that. You know, I don't know. I'm yeah. going a little off topic, but yeah, we, yeah, 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 we are, <laughs> we are. How are we gonna, how are we gonna rescue this one? All right. Well, well, what we could do is, what do we, we got on the comments? Then who's 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 got what coming up? So as far as target next for my bad self. Any anything as soon as it clears and anything, whatever it's rising, falling, you name it. If it's in the north from UK, uh, it's in my. I'm, I'm mainly north north. I've got a weird one here. All my other homes have been south. My telescope view has been predominantly south, but this is predominantly north. Quite 
whatever, yeah. bit of a bit of a change around. Actually, I'm quite enjoying it. it seems seems to work well. Yeah, I can uh, pick up targets on the climb and seem to follow them for ages up to the zenith and get nice long. You know, when the hours are there to be got, um, I seem to be get, getting a lovely time with my north view. So I would probably I might try and go back to pinwheel, but I've already had a go at that. That's um, something I need to do. I, I haven't done ah, do my new my new rig. I haven't done. Uh, I haven't okay. Done, so with the with the um, Esprit. Yes. With the Esprit, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So ah, Ellis right. M eighty one. Mark Ellis said M eighty one. M eighty one. M eighty two. Yeah. I was on those the other night while the clouds rolled in, just getting some. Will this fit? Because I've got the, the rig locked down. This one doesn't have a rotator. I'm having a peep at what sort of fits in the field of view um, in any opportunity until a, a good night comes along. Uh, and M81 and M82 will, will sit there quite nicely. So, yes, Mark, I'm on the case there. Yeah, so, so well, which telescope do you have again? You have... At the moment, I'm running the Altair Wave Series 115 millimeter. So he's about five inches of triplet, FBL 53 triplet. So he's a heavy uh, triplet APO refractor. Altair 115, which camera are you using? Wave, and this is using the Altair Hypercam 294 Protec, which means it's got the big fat cooler on the back. Uh, I see it. Oh, they, don't, they, don't have the, they don't have that on here. I oh, know. Oh, you haven't looked for it. I'll, I'll stick a link in the uh, in, a, in a thing afterwards. This one one five is very very nice. It's the same chip as the, uh, the same chip as the, yes, the same base chip as the ZWO. The body's yeah. different. The um, the board is different. The way it processes is different. Uh, probably the biggest difference I've seen between the Altair and there's two differences actually between the Altair and the ZWO is the level of um, sensitivity is higher in the Altair, but also the cooling design is better. Mm -hmm. So the cooler on the Altair, it's a bigger body, and it does all the problems about freezing um, okay. and, and the cautiousness that I had, because I started out the, the cool camera game with the ice maker. And uh, it made me very, very cautious. With the Altair, you don't necessarily have to be as cautious as I am. So this thing will gulp lots and lots of air, cool very quickly, very stably, uh, no, no hint of frosting or freezing. Um, and it's got four gigs of RAM, and you think, oh my goodness, mate, why would you need a four gig buffer? But actually it helps in, in uh, a number of ways to get that data off the chip. Uh, into yeah. the RAM, away from the uh, from the electroluminescence, and so they can they can do some juggling. I know all the different camera manufacturers juggle their pros and cons, and so Altair have juggled uh, higher sensitivity, um, getting that data off the chip into the digital realm um, and down to your PC. It is nicely managed, and so you get. Uh, uh, I said, well, I say you get, I appear to be getting uh, a bit more signal and uh, um, much more stability with the cooling for the okay. funny British climate and certainly no sign of frosting or, or dewing. So, yeah, basically the same sensor, but um, same sensor plus. And I think I've got a feeling that they're a little bit less expensive for the same car. They're either the same price or a bit less expensive, but they also come with a dedicated 12-volt plug-in mains power supply, and that's just another step on. If you want super clean data, use this dedicated power supply rather than just plugging into any old power tank or, or uh, old, old lash-up that you've got. Uh, a nice clean power supply seems to help um, our cameras too. So. You get a free power supply with the Altair, so. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and a carry case. Carry case wasn't so important for me, but it's if you're going in touch, it is, isn't it? Actually, yeah. I know that I know ZW won't give you a padded bag, but a tough case is um, it's a nice touch, but it didn't swing it for me. 
the power supply swung it for me and the cooler. I don't know if the noise level and the extra detail will swing it from my level of skill, but the power supply. Yeah, so, absolutely. 25 quid power supply. So Nice. Hmm. Yeah, so I just I actually just put this on and let I, mean, I hope the audio doesn't cut out, but we'll we'll see. What have you got for us? There we ah, go. Cool. Okay, so this is your setup versus my setup. Uh, okay. Oh, and, did you find it in there? Or well, similar? I, well I got the uh Altair the Wave one fifteen. Yes. Oh yeah, that's it. With the with the with the ZWO two ninety four. That'll do, yeah, yeah, exactly, same, same, same. Along with my Skywatcher, the Esprit 80, with the 8300M. Awesome. Beautiful scope, so that the, it's real gem. Yeah, I, I love it, I love it. But here's here's where you got to start thinking, I believe, about what you want to shoot and what you're really going to get. Okay. Uh, okay. So, you know, so you, with your, you, look at how your M81 is nice and it takes up... A nice part of your chip where you're gonna get the you're gonna get the nice kind of wispiness here, and you're gonna, you're gonna yeah. get it's it looks like it's fairly a big size for your chip. I mean, yes, it, you know it's 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 not overbearing. It's not Andromeda, which will be probably wouldn't. No, be no, but the, yeah, but what is is it? There's only one Andromeda. All the other galaxies are about this size, aren't they? Or, well, what most of them. Yeah, but as you go down to the 80, oh, even too. though you got a chip, your fo your focal length is a lot smaller. But yeah. look at how small, look at how small it gets. You can, you know, you can fit M81, M82 in mine. You could probably yeah. put them in yours as well. Um, again, if you touch it a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But but now when you're dealing with a bigger chip size and a smaller focal length. Yeah your objects become less impressive if they're small do you know what um this is something that i'm glad we're touching on actually because that's true and so it's about half the size i would uh, i would estimate there the, the the difference of the field of view between sure. those two setups so seemingly a huge difference what about the quality of the s big but then we had a look at the the pixel size, didn't we? If the if the pixel size is similar, then I guess by the time you've cropped in, correct. We're we're still going to be we we are going to be comparing apples with apples, aren't we? So at yeah. some point you're going to you're going to become pixelated. You can't claw back, right? Just on quality no, on this one. I I I. I gotta say I, you know maybe that's a good project for this this spring maybe we should both shoot that shoot and this and then you crop in hard on m81 yeah, and yeah. See what it's like yeah yeah oh i bet you it will be gorgeous because the um the, the s pig is just such a high quality well it's going to be a very good little game in any case isn't it it's going to be a good experiment a, a yeah. cmos cmos vccd top of the list there yeah straight yeah. away yeah. um and, and i got the kaf uh, yes you the, do the, the you know the kaf 8300 chip in there yes so, i mean yeah yeah that's one of the what the, the highest mass produced chips that's ever been made probably as far mm. as ccd is concerned yeah uh, yeah but yeah. um i mean it's it's they're both great cameras uh -huh. no reason why we can't kind of compare them and see what we get even if it's a um, a, a one-sub like-for-like, I don't want to take out of your um, your 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 imaging time for an experiment. However, I would be fascinated to do a uh, an hour or two on that with you, Dan, and see what yeah. the differences are. Why not? Mm. Yeah, you know, we could do we could do like very uh, interesting. I don't know, like. Uh, 45 minutes each channel and be done with it. Well, do you know what? I've got the easy job, haven't I? Because um, with the 294... Yeah, color. The one, one, one shot color laziness, isn't it? La la lazy all the way. <laughs> Come on, be a real guy. Be a real <laughs> astrophotographer and do filters and spend all that crazy money on filters. Abs absolutely. Well, I tell you what, I'm, um, 
I, I will do that. What difference would it make if if we have time on on this one? What difference would it make having a look at a couple of other uh, sensor sizes on on that very screen? I also have the sixteen hundred size okay. chip and the one eight three, which are which are probably about. I don't have one of these new um, glow free chips yet, but I'll I'll have one before long. The Amplo, yeah. Mm. Uh, but I do have a five thirty three and five thirty three and the two nine and the twenty six hundred. Twenty six hundred, yeah. And the uh, Altair two nine six two six nine. No, that one I don't know yet. Let me just bring that up. I'll put a link in for this one, and there's um, some reviews out already and some test photos from from out here let me just bring it up i get this one back to front i think it's a 269. which which uh, camera did you want to check first you said you had uh, i've got a 1600 which is one of the world's most popular mono uh chips you can possibly ever get out there and Altair and zwo both make that chip yeah 1600 there we go and then you got the 115. Yeah, that new chip from Altair is... So CWO have their 533 uh, chip. And Altair have their 269 color chip. So these are glowless chips. Um, the Altair is a bigger chip, though, just to uh, just to point that out. It's a bigger, it's a bigger chip, and it's got more on-board memory. 20, 21 megapixel on the 269. So I got the sixteen hundred, the two ninety four, and you said a one eighty three. And a one eighty three, yeah. Let's, let's. Would you mind indulge me? Let's, let's see what that does. No, well, to our, oh, okay, okay. So the one eighty three is in blue. You're the little one, yes. The sixteen hundred is the purple, and the two ninety four is the green. So. So not a lot in it then, with the two ninety four and the sixteen hundred. No, but you know what? I, I kind of like the framing of the 183. Do you? I kind of like Daniel. it because, you know, at least the way it looks on here, I kind of like mm. the way it looks because, mm. you know, it kind of puts M81 front and center. It does, doesn't it? You know, that's you got to think of it. It's, it's probably, if you're looking left to right, it's probably, I would say, I don't know, what, what would you say? That's probably like a fifth of the size of the chip. Just the entire galaxy. I, I would imagine you're right. You know, I mean that that you know. It, I would imagine you're right, mate. I think that's kind of really good for little galaxies like that. So if you wanted just a mm. shot of M eighty two, that might look really good with that chip size because it's it's bam, it's in your face. You know, whereas if you look at mine or at the eighty and the and the and the S big camera, it's so much space around it. Yes. That it kind of makes it look a little bit, to me, a little unimpressive. Until have, you prop in and that kind of stuff. Have a look at your Esprit 80 with a 183 chip on it. Okay. If you wouldn't mind. No, yeah, no problem. Because I bet you that would be a really sweet match. That's just a smaller pixels. It's a small chip. Smaller pixels, not very expensive in the scheme of things. Mono or color, but he hasn't got a big field of view, the 183, and he did get a bit of a name for um, Amp Glow, which is the wrong uh, yeah. expression, Sorry. isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, the wrong yeah, term. Yeah. It's, it's, it's another sort of glow. It doesn't, it doesn't really have amps. No, it doesn't have amps, does it? So it's got it's got luminescence. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, but they still call it amp glow, and it'll probably remain to be called amp glow for. We know for, what we're talking. It's, yeah. it's got glow. It's yeah. got yuck. Yeah, exactly. How, yeah. However, easily dealt with. Easily no, dealt. Yeah. We we all know what to do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but th there you go. That's my setup with the one eighty three in orange. Wow. Side box. So, that brings it right back down, doesn't it? Yeah, so I mean, you know, unfortunately, you know, I'm not going to go buy another Esprit. You know, they're expensive enough. But Oh, uh, good no, Lord. You know, you know, good Lord, no, 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 no. I wonder how many lifetimes that Esprit will last. That's 
that's four elements in your esprit, isn't there? No, it's a triplet. It's a triplet. Oh, it's yours a triplet, and yeah. so you've got a um, a doodar on the back. Then I would imagine you I'm have sorry, your what? you have your flatter on the on the back. What, what did you call it? A doodar. What's a doodar? A doodar. Uh, it's a, a doodar. Is it? Oh, that's anything. Uh, is it anything? <laughs> okay. A, a doodar isn't anything you can't remember the name for. A so flatter. It's a Re whatchamacallit. Yeah, there you go. Thingamajig. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. Just, just so we got some little translation for the U.S. people that are watching. I bet you people are saying, what did he say? Oh, it's a doodar, darling. <laughs> and all the English people are like, oh, yeah, I know what that is. And... <laughs> oh, I should hope they do. I should hope they do. Uh, we, we do have a couple of comments here. That we oh, hit us. Hit us. Do we say, um, oh, we wish, we wish Nicole good luck with the 200 DPS, the big yeah. gun, tomorrow yeah. in Scarborough? Uh, Clear skies. See. We got uh, Marks at M81, Eric and Nicole, hey, you need to meet me in Arizona. Um, <laughs> what do you guys cool your cameras down to? Ah. Good question. Well, do you want to take that one first, Daniel? No, knock yourself out. I've done enough talking. <laughs> well, when I first got the cool cam, I was very cautious. Right? That's just, just my nature. Expensive um, microelectronics, a uh, little bit cautious. And so there's the 071, the big um, CWO uh, DSLR size chip sensor. And I didn't have problems with mine, so I called him nice and slowly. The only times I had uh, problems with glitches when the cooler software had run away with itself. And so I learned to cool. I started cooling to minus 20 degrees centigrade. And that's not below ambient, that's actual. So minus 20 is the uh, the sensor temperature. So pretty, pretty cold. Um, but what I found was then when I came along to do my calibration libraries, cooling that sensor back down to minus 20 in the daytime became a bigger and bigger effort and I started to wonder, this is probably getting a bit nerdy, that if my cooler was running at 90, 100%, would it be making more noise than uh, when I was using the camera at perhaps minus one or two degrees centigrade at night in the winter here, uh, running at minus 20 when the cooler wouldn't be running as hard. And so I decided to change to minus 10 now, I haven't noticed any big increase in noise or uh, degradation in the data. I've also seen some uh, information from manufacturers saying minus 10 is pretty good uh, for these cameras, that things tend to tail off with the noise, that whatever you're going to, the return on, on your investment of cooling tends to, to sweeten out at about minus 10. And so I call now to minus 10, across the board, never had any problems since. And nice. mind you, the only problem I had was when uh, the software had run away with itself and just said to the cooler, put the cooler on full. And I'd looked at it and gone, oh, my goodness me, minus 30. That's wrong. And there were crystal, clearly crystal patterns all over the, the preview screen. Uh, so, so I've seen that. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, you go ahead. So I've seen that. Uh, so minus 10 for those reasons. Well, I, I guess I just got a question. You, you said that the software ran away with the cooling. Now, was right. that an SGP issue or was that a internal Altair issue? Right, I've had it right. This was with um, ZWO on the 071 camera. So okay. a couple of years ago when that cam came out. Uh, and I had that run away with me on SG Pro and Astro Photography Tool and on APT. So it could have been my laptop, could have been my fumble finger uh, or disconnection with the camera. Some such could have been a USB issue, but whatever. The, the software, and this was two different pieces of software, had disconnected with the camera temporarily. The cooler had got confused as to what setting it was on and basically just put itself on full cooling. And within, within 60 seconds, we've reached some horribly cold temperature. Now, what I've noticed with the Altair cameras is that with the big coolers, the big Protec hypercams, is that you will see the temperature. Notice when you plug them in and start cooling and you say minus 10, you might see it briefly go minus 12, 15, 17, 
and then it will come back up and stabilize. So you want to run that out there for a minute or two and get the whole body. You know, and the, the, I guess the whole, it's not just the center, is it? The whole thing has got to achieve some kind of equilibrium, which as we tend to do with our calibration libraries, not all, not all of us, but me, I often, even though I've got the, the shed observatory, will bring a telescope in if it's stormy or I'm working on it, uh, and I'll do my calibration libraries indoors, and then I've got to cool that camera to a, a certain temperature. So minus 10 seems to be the sweet spot for me now. Okay. Right. And that's well, yeah. GWO and Altair. So I've got no experience with anything else. No attic, no SBIG. Right. Well, I, no I guess the one thing that confused me a lot, and it's still confusing me, is, I, 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 you know, even on SG Pro where it says uh, in the settings, and in, in, for those of you guys who don't know what SG Pro is, that's Sequence Generator Pro. Uh, wow. That's a piece of software that, uh, that can kind of run your entire rig. Uh, but there are settings for your cooling in there, and it says cool to minus whatever you put in there to, in two minutes, three minutes. In whatever. so many minutes, yeah. Yeah, whatever you want to put in there. Now, my understanding of cooling, and I could be wrong, maybe I'm a little bit behind the times with with uh, the technology, which is definitely quite possible, but I thought that most cooled cameras could only get to a certain temperature below your ambient temperature. It's not going to get to negative 20 at like an 80 degree day. Is that is that true or is that not true? That's, that's how I read it too. So hopefully there'll be some comments that will even back us up or kick us to the curb but from what i read it's minus 45 oh, sorry it's 45 below ambient so in right. the uk if i'm 20 degrees positive then theoretically the most i can call my camera is minus 25. okay and okay a total of 45 degrees well i guess i guess my thing would be then is if SG Pro is saying to cool down to negative 20 Celsius. Yeah. So that will be sensor temperature. Out. It's going to, well, yeah, it's going to, this, What's this the was the really going to be. Well, <laughs> this, this was the, what I was noticing. Um, bit, again, stupid schoolboy thing. I had a telescope in, uh, in the spring in the conservatory. And normally it's quite cold out there in the, winter and the early spring on this particular morning the sun had come through the trees and was uh warming that particular area up and i noticed that the camera um the percentage usage of the cooler was running a lot higher than normal and it was because obviously the ambient temperature was higher excuse me so uh oh yeah I'm allergic to my cat. Uh-oh. They were around somewhere. So, um, excuse me. So, um, yeah, what, what we got, 3, 3 a.m., they're, they're up. So, uh, yeah, so what, what I noticed was that minus 10 was a better thing for, you know, you can't fight that cooler and that, that percentage use of the cooler, keep an eye on that because if, you're, if your cooler's running at 100% when you're doing your calibration frames... Yep. Uh, I reckon your camera is going to be noisier. Could be wrong. Than if you than if you were using it on a very cold night to take your subs, sure. and also to use the same power supply when you're cooling your camera for your calibration frames as you used to take your pictures, because there seems to be some correlation with the noise that the camera picks up. I, I think. That would, so, that would make logical sense to me, I would think. Same, yeah. same lead, same power supply, same situation. So it's it's just one of those things where it's not always convenient for everybody to take their darks and their flats while they're out in the field. I'd prefer the convenience of doing it at my leisure sometime, possibly days later. Uh, so, yeah, those are, those are things I've noticed with the, um, the CWO and the Altair cameras, I don't cool them so much now as I used to. Uh, and I certainly, in, in, in hot climates like like you guys on in the States, you know, it doesn't really get that. It got quite hot here um, last summer, 
in yeah. the UK. But uh, again, at night, we're, we're not. This this is this is not an extreme country by any means, and so uh, uh, pu pushing our equipment is, is very very light. Um, but yeah, minus ten. So whoever asked the cooling question, minus minus ten all round for me, and I've seen evidence from the manufacturers to back up that minus ten sensor temperature, actual centigrade, is a pretty good spot to be at. Okay, yeah, I got a lot okay. of people. I, I do. Uh, I I've been doing minus fifteen for whatever reason. Okay. Um, uh, Eric said he keeps it at minus fifteen. Yeah. Um, Mark Ellis said, "Oh, Dan, you don't want the Esprit one fifty. <laughs> that's cool. Hey, hey, wow. That's a nice scope. <laughs> a little heavy, I think, on the new mount. But uh, you know, yeah. um, Eric Watson says he's going to work on the Leo triplet with a Zenith Star one twenty six and a two ninety four. Hey, Eric. Let's see. okay. Oh, ZS one twenty six. Yeah, that's very interesting. That's yeah. that's uh, that's quite a lot of glass there in the one twenty six. That will be that should be a nice uh, a nice weapon. Eric, Let's look forward to seeing that. What it looks like. Mm. That's uh, what is that? Ninety five, ninety six, ninety seven. Is that the Leo, the triplet? Oh no, sixty five, sixty six, sixty. Okay, that's it. Okay. Thank you. I, uh, I was doing the goldfish then. I don't know. Um, and then. Uh... Let's see. So he's using the Zenith Star One Twenty Six. Nice. That's a uh, William Optics, right? Yeah. William Optics, Zenith Star, do you even have it? 80, Zenith Star 126 with a 294. Now let's see what kind of framing we have over here for Mr. Eric. The 294. That should be a very, very nice combination, yeah. actually. And we'll add that to the view, and look at that. All right. Oh, oh yes, you, yeah, you get all of that, won't yeah, you? Yeah, you're Beautiful. getting all that. You're getting the hamburger. You're getting everything. You, you, yeah, all you gotta do is shift it over a little bit. Obviously, it's centered on what I told it to be centered on. Uh, it's centered on uh -huh. M66 right now, but you're definitely gonna fit all that in there. That's gonna that's gonna be a nice photo. Yeah, that's gonna be a 126. That that's like the perfect scope and camera for that group of targets. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it that, is. That's gonna be really nice. I bet you that shows up um, right in the sweet spot in the CCD calculator with the chip size, the, um, sorry, the, uh, the the pixel size. Well, let, let's play around then. We'll, 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 we'll go a little bit off here. So telescope is the Zenith Star 126, right? 126 for Mr. Watson. healthy sized piece of glass for a refractor isn't it yeah absolutely and yeah look at that look at that now would he be using a reducer on it i expect that, that might take it down a little tiny bit it might uh, still in the green you know 0.7 reducer there you go get you right in the middle bingo um, bingo thought so yep yeah good call good call i mean that that is a great matchup. If you did that on purpose, I'm jealous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, of course uh, you did. Of course you did. You did your research on this. So, you know, we all do. Read. I don't read technical manuals. <laughs> 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 even though, even though my friend Tim keeps on R R R T F M Dan Higgins. Oh, Dan, Dan, read it. <laughs> read it, man. <laughs> read it, man. Read it. I don't even know where a manual is. Do I even have a manual up here? No, no, I don't have a manual anywhere. No manuals. Yeah, I got my McDonald's manual. There you go. McDonald's oh, 2020. There you go. <laughs> for those of you guys who don't know, I've been working for McDonald's Corporation and, and franchisees for the past 30 years, so I've been around. <laughs> so, um, all right, so we got some questions. Oh, um, good, good, oh, good. We got some statements, too. We got Eric said, yes, it is definitely cool below whatever ambient is at that time of day. Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, Eric, I, I, I get that, but I still don't get, and I, maybe this is me, sometimes it's a little bit of a blockhead, it happens. Uh, but if SGP is, say, a negative 20, and we yeah. only go 40 to 45 degrees below ambient, what is the real temperature? 
And I guess, I guess it all, when it's all said and done, it really doesn't matter because the photos and the darks, even if you put minus 20, it's going to be cooled at whatever it does all the time, no yeah. matter what the number temperature is. As long as that sensor temperature matches yeah, up exactly. as closely so, as possible. I, I'm guessing um, it's a, a moot point, maybe. I don't know, but maybe it's just me being overly anal about knowing what what's going on. Maybe I've I seen the temperature shift around by a degree. Um, and not have any complaints from my stacking software. So I've seen SG Pro um, not be able to hold it to a precise. You know, I've, I've seen variants. Have you? Yeah, I've, I've seen a yeah, little bit I've seen it fluctuate. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So over the course of the night, I may see even a, a two degree um, shift throughout right. the night. Uh, right. But but when it when it comes down to calibrating the frames, I really what what if I saw any Seems sort of right. gradient issues. It was very negligible, very negligible. Mm. So, um, mm -hmm. I wouldn't go any much further than two or three degrees. So I think you're asking for trouble. If uh, yeah, I would. I would think that would ring alarm bells, wouldn't it? You'd, you'd wonder what's happening. Uh, do you cool when you're doing your flats? I cool for darks, but not for flats, and I don't do it for dark flats as well. Right, I cool for everything. Every same yep. conditions, same leads, same focus, yep. same temperature same everything i may move the scope i might bring it i might dismount it and bring it in but same everything don't touch anything yeah the, the only thing that i do and i think we touched on this on a prior video or a prior show that um the only thing i do every like quarter or every four months i'll refresh, oh, my refresh dark library Right, I was reading about this, and we did touch on it, didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. Sensors change. You could get new hot pixels, new dead pixels, yep. new new. I mean, obviously, the defects will change in the other in in the light components uh, every, every time you shake or sneeze. But if for the dark components, yeah, most definitely, your camera's going to going to change over its lifetime, and its sensitivity is going to change. I, 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 well, I don't know. That could be me talking out of my hat. There, I would assume these things are going to. Um, from what I've read, they change over their lifetime, and I assume in ten years it's going to be less sensitive and more burnt out and messed up than it was the day I got it. I, I would think so. Eventually, you know, th things, you know, we all do it. We all get old. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure that the chips are no different. I mean, it is, yeah. uh, you know, you're it's grabbing all these photons and grabbing all the light, and who knows? Maybe it does over time become. Uh, less sensitive but um, you know another thing is especially if you're dealing with large temperature swings and we're only cooling to a certain yeah. amount of degrees below ambient you know it may not be getting down to that negative 20 maybe if it's 70 degrees at night now you're getting the, only down to positive 20 of Fahrenheit you know what I mean mm -hmm. so it may be a difference there so that's why I do it like when the, when the temperature changes so, you know, not to mention the fact all the other defects that you could have, but you're not going to get it down in the summertime to the same temperature as you are in the wintertime. Right. So you've got a thermal uh, requirement, yeah. du requirement to, mm -hmm. to maintain your duty of, uh, of updating your calibration libraries. I don't find it that big a chore, personally. I don't, I don't look at it, wake up and go, oh, no. I've got five hours of darks. It's so, <laughs> it's, it, it is simple, isn't it? And it's, it's not, it isn't rocket science. No, and, it, it, it's easy. Yeah. And no, it, no excuses. Um, the, the people come up to me all the time. I, I had a customer from, at the store today saying that, you know, I, I want to get into astrophotography and da, 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 and all this stuff. And, and I was like, listen, well, how serious are you? Are you like, are you like serious? He's like, well, I've been using my DSLR, so I'm, I've been playing around a little bit, and I want a dedicated camera. And you know, he points at this camera, ZWO. I think it was the either the 178 or the 294 non-cooled camera mm -hmm. for like, I think it was 399 or something like that. It was it was mm -hmm. up to that effect. And and I'm like, listen. You're trading apples to apples here when you do this because you're just going from one uncooled camera to the next. Yeah. It's, you know, if you're getting into astrophotography and you're taking long-term exposures, do you really want to spend half your imaging time taking darks? Because that's what you're going to do. 
Yeah. You're wasting yeah. all this valuable time. And we've just had a 15, 20 minute discussion on how the, even though the winter was mild, the skies were horrible, you know, for <laughs> most, you know, and, and so the, the limited amount of time that we have, you're going to want a cooled camera because if it's rainy, cloudy or crappy out, you can take your telescope, put it outside. And if you're crazy like me, I put a nice little blanket over it and I leave the camera open so it gets a nice airflow. And I'll, I will take darks for the weekend. I'll, I'll do my yeah. one, two, three, four, and five minute frames. I'll do a hundred of each and I'll leave it outside. Right. In a hundred of each. Right. Yeah, I do okay. hundred. Yeah, I do five. Yeah, I do, I'm crazy. I don't know why. I do. You know, I, my thought is the more data you have. Yeah, no, yeah, totally. Totally. No, 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 absolutely. You know, no, no, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. I'm up to 50 now. See, I used to scratch around and just think, oh, I'll just do 10 quickly. That'll do. Yeah, 10's not do, do 10. Have a quick look at it. That'll do. Slap it on Facebook. Hooray. <laughs> Hooray, another one. And it's not, yeah, it's, things things evolve, don't they? Think, things evolve. So I'm up to 50 calibration frames now, but you do 100. Yeah, I, I do 100. I, well, I do 100 darks. I do probably about... Depending on how much time, I mean, flats are relatively short. Flat, uh, yeah, yeah, flats are dead easy. Yeah, aren't they? So, and bias are even shorter than that. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Oh, do you still do bias? Do I, you do? You know still, what? Still do I, bias? I do. I, I'm not sure if I I'm getting a benefit out of it. I haven't really, I haven't really went went bias and without bias. I I said, you know what? It, it's a tenth of a second. Run fifty yeah. of them. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, it, it doesn't really hurt the issue. You know, it doesn't no. while I'm packing up, you know, so. No, it's no, really it's just laziness on my part. There was a there was a rumor went round um, a forum or a thread or something, ZWO a year, a year ago saying don't bother with bias anymore. And so I stopped, stopped bothering. But uh, talking to Alta and they say, hmm, do your bias, yeah. do all your calibration, do your duty. You well, want good I, shots. I heard that duty. dark flats are actually more important than right bias, this is uh, i haven't done them yet <laughs> yeah right this is where my knowledge starts to crumble slightly because i'm now at the at master master flat master master dark master flat yep i hear you That's but what yeah I yeah so so i'm there but what's it what was what did you just say what do i what do i need a dark bias no the, the dark flat I need a dark flat. It's 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 just that's a coffin, surely. I, I'm not sure what. I'll be honest with you. I'm really not sure what it does, but <laughs> you know, I, I never used them. I no, no, I, I must bone up on this new calibration stuff. I'm a bit slow on it. I mean, one of the, one of the things um, I went to uh, the Pix Insight, the big learning curve with Pix Insight, and I tried Astro Pixel Processor. The other day, and I've got to say, Astro Pixel Processor made a damn good job of just getting on with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I'm, I've been getting some decent results with just the the flat dark bias. Um, flat dark bias, right? Okay. And do you use Master Darks? Um, do you, do you, you know what? Do, do it depends stuff on too. how far I'm into the project. So, like with my Heart Nebula one, where I have. Yeah. You know, when I have uh, when oh, flats, pretty. I'll have flats that are, um, you know, every night. So I've done seven nights and I've done flats for all the seven nights because, you know, things change in your optical train. You, you may have yeah. a new dust moat, you may have something new That's going on, whatever the case may be. Right. So right. I'll have seven nights of flats and I'll do 30 or 40 per night. So now you're at 280 flats at whatever how many seconds. So do I do the master flat? Um, on that case, yes, I do. I'll pile it all together and I'll and I'll do it all as a master flat for either whatever that's, channel. That that's dedicated, Dan, to do flats each session each yeah. night. That's I do, yeah. I do I do them each night. And you know yeah. it's, you know if you take if I ever get this hard oh, work cool. finished, that's um, gonna be amazing. You know, I think it's going to be really, really good. And and a friend of mine did uh, gave me. A, I'm, I, I'm not allowed. He said it's a it's a trademark secret. So I'm not allowed. I promised I wouldn't say what it is or how to do it. <laughs> but but um, 
there's a way to kind of get with your um he came up with this way to kind of get color or close to true color using narrow band and also you know for when you could do narrow band um you know the colors of the stars aren't really they're not right no they're right no 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 oh i see i see so you're doing narrow band but you want to get natural stars yeah so kind of get oh, rgb stars with a narrow yeah. band nebula and so he figured out a way how to do it and he showed me and he came up with a really good cool. picture so he's cool. kind of teaching me the technique that he does okay but, are you going to use it on the heart um i'm not sure if i'm going to be that good at it yet <laughs> but, right. but, but for now i think it'll just be a narrow band thing and i'll play around with the technique but we'll, we'll see my um, method of getting narrow band uh, sorry, getting RGB on narrow band is to then obviously go over it with a one shot color, quickly. Yeah, and yeah or, or you or you take the RGB data, which I have. Um, oh, did you do some R RGB? I did. I did. I did three nights of as RGB well. Oh, I okay. So you got that too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I got oh. the star color data. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's just uh, a matter of kind of putting it together. It's going to be fab. 25 hours. Is, but then I've seen it's not just any old 25 hours. It's extremely good quality. Yeah, I'm hoping. Uh, let's see. So I got some more stuff. Uh, Nicole says, I'm very envious of your cooled cameras. Us mere mortals with our DSLR <coughs> spend so much time capturing calibration frames, wasting the clear skies, and stuck with frozen fingers and toes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> uh, Eric says, Tim, never... yeah, it's a great combination. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is, Eric. It is. It is. Yeah. It, it looks, um, when Eric got the 126, I thought that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the thinking man's. Because I bought the 103 uh, and the 126, just this, yeah. Yeah, yeah actually, I just saw that there was a, uh, it's a lot more glass. A, a Gran Turismo came in. Uh, okay. From uh, some uh, Jeff over at Camera Concepts, he he keeps on buying stuff and you know from other people at star parties, and he does some horse trading and stuff like that. Oh, and, good. Uh, he picked up this really mint condition, nice white and blue Gran Turismo. Um, really perfect condition, but uh, I I almost picked it up, but I got to pay for the sprinkler system. <laughs> so what size is it? What, is what it? size? 81, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Not very suitable size. Yeah. yeah. Nicole, yeah. never write off a DSLR in yeah. astrophotography. I, it never ceases to amaze me. It, uh, it, old, even, even old, even old Canons. Old Canon cameras never cease to amaze me. It doesn't see, it just seems to be the skill and the magic in the fingers, in the cold frostbitten the fingertips far more yeah. than, the, <laughs> yeah. than the, the, the bank account than the ability to shed money uh, over the counter at telescope shops. The, the skill in the fingertips every time. So don't write off your DSLR. Yes, that some of these cool cameras do have advantages um, and maybe a slight edge in noise. That's yeah. all. Oh, That's yeah. all. Well, well but I, I don't know if it's slight. It's actually, <laughs> I, I think it's kind of larger than slight. But, but um, D DSLRs, um, we I think we all started with them. Oh, do, well, I went. I, I, I had I, to, did. I, I went across ways to to a DSLR as the poor man's entry point to deep sky. Um, yeah. Again, not thinking that I could do it. So I had a little 224 planetary gotcha. cam um, and then got a DSLR and, yeah, and then the bug. Yeah, and that, yeah. in, in actual fact, the DSLR on the moon was what really got made the bug bite home hard. Yeah, I'm sure. That's, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Hey, you know, when you're doing... When you're doing uh, um, either AVIs or whatever you, whatever video you you take when you're doing planetary or luna dslr is perfectly fine yeah it's yeah yeah it really fine. is really the only, is the, the only thing that i i just couldn't stand and what made me I, I just got tired because in in new york and i'm sure the same as in england um the weather 
of the, you know it's it's fleeting uh you know so the nights that you have you don't want to blow them on spending three hours or whatever taking darks or two hours taking darks or even an hour uh, right oh right i guess yeah yeah the if you're purist with the dslr you want to do everything on that night on the capture night don't you yeah. to maintain the linearity of of temperature so yeah you do have a much harder job the the cool cameras do give you a lot more flow so you get that thing with the noise but you get all that flexibility don't you to to pack up and uh, and, and do all your calibration stuff do all the rubbish work yeah, but maybe absolutely. maybe nicole's in good timing should um she choose to make that jump uh from the dslr now this new breed of um glowless cameras has come out because are we going to look back nostalgically at calibration frames and go astros astros ruined no i'm not having to do darks i don't know we'll have to um, see am, am i going to wake up in five years and go i really miss doing calibration stuff I don't know that. Am I? I suppose I will. Yeah, I don't know. It's part of the quirk of it, isn't it? It was, it was part of the. Um, I mean, it was a shock to my system to to go to the next level and find out. Uh, hold on, it isn't that the next level isn't taking pretty pictures. The next level is taking calibration frames. Actually, yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Eric asked us a question. It says, "How have you guys decided the right ADU for the flats?" Oh, we we better. had a little one on this one the other day, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, sharp sharp cap center analysis all day long. That ten quid for sharp cap pro. Yep. And uh, uh, slap me straight, unless uh, I, I'm not advertising <laughs> it. I don't. I don't know the the chat. Rod, Roger, did you say it was Roger? The, What's the, inventor, the inventor of shark caps, it Roger Robin, Robin, right? Do big part, Robin, Robin, right? For a tenor, for all of that kit and technology, so you've got the you've got the shark cap itself, you've got the polar alignment, and you've got central analysis for a tenor. What a toolbox! It's got to be the best value in in an Astro. So, um, so even though with all of that, I tend to. Uh, for finding the correct ADU in my flats, I use sharp cap and I open up the big histogram and I ignore all of the technology and I move the I move my exposure slider until I've got my histogram mm -hmm. just really nicely where I want it, right in the middle, nicely illuminated right in the middle and I stick it there yeah. is what yeah. I do. And if you no. wanted to go old school, you could just find out what your your maximum well depth is. Right. This is this. That's what I should do. Well, I don't do that either. You know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, I do kind of the same thing that you do. I will take my flat panel and I will put it on my on my scope, and I already got it's got uh, with the uh, where do I got the um, the Lacerta flat panel the uh, oh yeah good one i got that it's got the uh the brightness variability knob um so yeah. it's got that so i, I kind of got tape one for narrow band one for broadband and i have a obviously higher for narrow band and lower for broadband but um i'll sit there and i so i got a good star point i know it's going to move in transport whatever but and then i'll throw it on there and then i'll, I'll sit there and i'll take a frame and focus shot with sgp and I'll say, okay, I'll look at that histogram. I have the histogram on it, just like you do. And, you know, somewhere from a half to two thirds, somewhere around there, I'll stop it. And then I'll take the flat. Yeah. And that's it. I'll be yeah. done. And, and then I'll run my sequence and, and that's it. Because I have actually, in sequence generator, I probably actually have a sequence for flats. Yes, yes, yes. So you just, can make I, your, your proper sequence, can't you? Yeah, the sequence I'm, generator pro is well catered for, it has a flats calibration wizard and a flats dude up do, do you not bother with that though you just no, i did at the beginning i did yeah me too you know and and then i said you know what it, it, you know what? It, it failed too many times because it you know you can take it out but you know it, it'll it'll want to do a one bin two bin three bin uh, for each filter and you can take yeah. those bins out you don't have to do that yeah. Um, but it just got to be annoying that, you know, why am I going to do this every single time? Yeah. If it's, 
once you've sussed it, it's quicker to just set it up yourself, isn't it? Yeah, just look at look at the histogram. Make sure it's anywhere from a half to a little bit more, maybe depending. You know, you want that nice gray. You don't want to see any dark. You don't want to see any too much bright. You want to be able to see some of the dust motes. That's okay. It'll get rid of it. That's what it's for. You know. Yeah. You know. You know. And you get a nice flat. Yeah. If you field. if you've got a stretch mode in your live preview where you can actually mm -hmm. see some muck in the preview, then you know you're on a good flat. There you go. Get all that stuff out of there. Yeah. If you, if you can see muck in your preview, then then yeah, it's work. It's working. And yeah. and you know that you've got a job for a quiet evening at some point. Although again, a lot of people tell me, don't don't bother chasing the dust. I, no. I actually uh, bought um, Zeiss lens spray mm -hmm. and a bunch of the tissues um, to have a go at the, the two inch filter wheel, which is just a dust magnet for me. Oh, absolutely. Uh, big, bigger the filters, bigger the, bigger the problem. But people tell me, don't bother. Don't just leave them alone. Flat them, flat them out. The, yep. the amount of I just feel that there'll be a piece of there'll be a most of dust on an interesting part of a nebula, and I, you know I, I'm, I'm somehow I'm losing data, uh, and I'm, I doubt I am. Nah, yeah, you know, every once in a while I sit there with the with the little rocket ship blower, you know, the little yeah. air blower, and yeah. I'll blow the stuff around. But then all it does is blow the dust around inside there, and it lands on it anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So, um, you know, I used to be kind of crazy on, on, on dust and everything, but I, I, I gotta be honest with you. I, I sat there and I, uh, my wife, I don't know if I, I said this last, my wife, Jen, she, uh, she purchased for me, um, a, uh, for the, you guys don't know who Adam Block is. Uh, Adam Block is an astrophotographer who has, um, kind of made a little niche for himself in, uh, Pix Insight tutorials. Ah, right. Okay. And, okay. Uh, he, he's, and it's a paid service. You do pay for it. It's like $180 mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, but it's literally like, I want to say it's something like 60 different videos on different stuff. Right. Um, going from, um, going from the screen transfer function to making star masks and everything. So it's, it, okay. it does a whole bunch, but, but Very he nice. actually showed his, the reason why I'm saying is I'm I'm really not digressing here, but, but, <laughs> but no, but she, she he actually shows one of his flats, and dust. the amount of dust in there I swear I, I don't know if it's too it looks like a, a virus screen that's what it looks like <laughs> it looks like all did. these donuts all over the place and he's got a nice illuminated field it's nice it's gray it's beautiful but yeah. man he must have had like a hundred and fifty little splotches but the pictures he takes. And go check it out. So it's adamblockstudios.com. Right, okay. And, um, and, and check it out. And he does some good stuff. Um, he's definitely got his credentials down. But um, he, he does a good job. He, do, he does a good job. So uh, so I, 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 even though that I thought that I knew Pix Insight a little bit, there's, I think I've learned something in every video. Right, right. Oh, that's, oh, that's the investment. That's the yeah. money well spent. Well done. Well done. So, uh, thank, thank, thank you to my wife. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, uh, Nicole, I actually Nicole, I am still amazed that with D, what DSLR can capture. Yeah. It is just that we have to travel over an hour away to the cold cliffs, and then we have limited clear skies here on the coast, so we just have to spend too long on darks before we walk home with everything Ooh. right right Hardcore. Uh, god bless you nicole you got more uh, uh i don't know if i could do that walk around and do all that but uh that's a lot um when the dsl shutter is destroyed um i don't know what that means i hope you didn't destroy your shutter <laughs> no don't um, do that and Mark Ellis said, uh, then you get some weird stuff like I got. And Eric said, thank you on that. I'm using the ZWO ASI Air for the calibration files as well. Oh, okay. So, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, like yeah. To say, it's got I'm still waiting that. on my Pro. I'm still waiting on my ASI Air Pro. I don't know. I don't know well, what to tell you. 
well, this, yeah, yeah, it's, a very, it's a very up in the air situation. But two months ago, I was probably uh, very blase about, you know, you know another, another virus, another scare, another load of hype. Uh, I'm not um, blase about it at all now. Um, yeah. You know, it's a lot of lives affected now, a lot of business yeah. affected. You know, there's people dying. Yeah. There's a lot of business affected. So there's a lot of families affected. I sure, uh, sure. very, very selfish. There's a lot of flights. So a um, uh, airline, little airline company uh, went bust today over here uh, with the impact of it. So, um, oh, get so out, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's there's, there's some more knock on effects that the normally normally the cynic in me that would go, ah, I don't know what you're panicking about. It's it is mm. uh, has changed somewhat. So my my tune has changed. And I'm very much. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm very so, much yeah, conscious everybody, of everybody is. Yeah, everybody's yeah. kind of freaked out about it. I mean, I tell you right now, the uh, and this we're, we're really going off topic, but that's okay because uh, it's important. Well, but, yeah, because um, it's the shows, isn't it? It's our industry and the shows. Exactly, but uh, you know, I I had a UPS delivery uh, today, and the UPS guy goes, "Come here, I want to show you something." And okay. And I was like, "Okay." So he goes, he goes, go inside. And I was like, go inside what? Go inside the truck. So I was like, I didn't think we were allowed to go into inside UPS, UPS trucks, but I went inside and I looked inside yeah. and I saw like 60 or 70 Amazon boxes. So was, I said, all right, big deal. He's like, you know what all those are? I said, no. He's like, they're hand sanitizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, Amazon is almost out of hand sanitizer. Yeah. That yeah, everybody's yeah. getting, uh, you know, I mean, I was like, Holy cow. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's happened here too. Hand sanitizer, even hand, even, um, antibacterial soap. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. For washing hands. Uh, yeah. So I hope obviously all the usual things, but it's the shows, the shows must go on. So sure. we have, um, practical astronomy show on the 21st, Saturday, the 21st. Yep. And you guys have obviously Neef and Neek, which is, yep. uh, pivotal. I mean, uh, Paz for the UK. The uh, UK's got uh, three or three or four shows, which are pro probably I wouldn't say pivotal for the industry, but that's too strong a term. So it's very important for the industry. Um, if we lose those shows, we lose an awful lot of public publicity and, yeah, and sure. fresh faces, and it's the fresh faces that we. we we're so desperate for in astronomy in the UK. What sort of impact would you think it would have if you lost NEAF this year, if it was cancelled? Uh, you know, it, it'd be a horrible thing for Rockland County. I mean, a lot of people uh, do go there from all across the world. They come, you know, I'm sure it's the same thing as, as uh, uh, PAS or PAS. Or, very, but PAS is very know. small. PAS is small. It's like a village market in comparison. Yeah. I, I would assume there'd be a quite a big impact if, if NEAF was cancelled, there'd be a big impact locally, but also for the for the uh, our suppliers too. I mean it's yeah. is is been is is astronomy booming? Would you say astronomy's on the up at the moment? Um, absolutely. Ab Ooh. absolutely. Um you know it, it's that and, and Dungeons and Dragons that are up. Uh, so, you know, God bless Gary Gygax. But, uh, <laughs> but um, uh, you know, I, I, I've been a Dungeons and Dragons player since I was 13 years old. And right. I right. went into a a, a, uh, a gaming store and there was 50, 60 people packed in the store. Really? Really? Younger, obviously That's younger good. than me, you know, like 20 yeah. years old. But they were all about, honestly, they, 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 talk to me about uh, astronomy stuff and they talk about Dungeons and Dragons stuff and that's you know it may be the the nerdy thing or whatever whatever it is but a lot of the nerd stuff is up um, Good. Good. and uh, especially in, in in the US I, I'm sure the UK is uh, no different uh, but um, it's it's been it's definitely been on the upstring uh, a lot of people are getting into it a lot of people especially since the not event but since the the real mainstreaming of, of live stacking, you know, right, right, where you get like this nice, um, semi decent picture, yes, looking in your house while the telescope's outside, while you're, and you yeah, go yeah, back, while you're working, yeah, 
you, you go have a drink, you come back, you look at it again, it gets better. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, go, you yeah. have another drink, it gets better. Sooner or later, it's going to get worse because you're drinking too much. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, funnily enough, on that live set, this, this is my little, um, this is my current outreach experiment using the Altair have just launched this little sensor uh, for highly affordable, super sensitive. This, I think this is the most sensitive chip in its class, little Sony jobby. So this is oh, yeah. the Altair GP Cam 327. And the okay. next time it clears up, uh, we'll do, be doing some live stacking. Canon EOS lens, Altair 327, and in one of their little DSLR adapters. So that's nice. going to be my little outreach camera. Of course, how sweet is that? Little 18, 55 millimeters. Yeah, that's a, the stock it. kit one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 20, yeah. 20 quid for me, 20 bucks eBay. So, um, so I'm going to try that for some outreach um, and some live stacking. Oh, you're going to blow me away, aren't you? Have you got your beat gun? I can't find it. I was looking for I was looking for my my setup my camera. Yeah. And maybe it's outside. I have the the similar one that you have. Uh, with oh, you've the, got uh, you've got the big daddy. Right, but actually now I get now I gotta find it now. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hope to see. But please do um, come and find me at Paz if you make it. I'll I'll have a Paz shirt on and a and a badge thing and a shiny head. So you can't miss me. Come and say hello. Those um that thing there is one of those. Have a look on the Altair site. They're ever so good, ever such good fun. Best thing you can do with an Astro Cam and a DSLR lens. Right. Are you back, Dan? Did you find it? Yeah, that is that is cool. That is so tiny. It's not as mm. so all, all metals, very, very strong. There's an addition to this. That's something I've been talking about, but... Ah! Boom. Okay. So, this is the addition. Oh, you got the autofocuser on it, right? Yeah. Got you. I see it now. I see it. Yeah. Oh, so I see got... Deep Sky Dad? Deep Sky Dad. Rocking. Yep, that's the AF3, and it's the uh, stronger motor. Right. And um, I was making a video the other day. Um, uh, George, I oh wow, he's saying that ne Mead is pulling out of Neef um, because of the coronavirus. Um, George, I I you know I haven't heard that. Um, I did hear that they were going to be using. Uh, United States um, representatives as opposed to uh, anywhere from Europe or Asia. Uh, but I did not hear that. Uh, I, if I hear anything, I will definitely put something on. But if you have some either documentation on it, I'd love to see it. And, uh, you know, because that would be definitely uh, definitely a loss considering the, the troubles that Mead is already going through uh, as far as their Mead, Mead, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, very, very so upsetting. Ever since they got bought out by uh, Sunny or whatever that Chinese company was that they bought, um, really, I, he said he got it from Lonnie Wedge. Um, wow. Okay. Well, that'd be that'd be a shame. Uh, I hope that's not true. Um, but it sounds like he got a decent uh, contact. <laughs> so um, yeah. that that would be really a shame. Uh, but look for us. Over at the first booth, as soon as you walk in, look for me. I'll be there. But um, anyway, so I got the same thing, a little bit bigger than what you got. It's not as small or not as small or nice. I mean, this is a little bit crazy. And you know what the cool thing about this is? I don't know if this is going to work, uh, but on, I don't know how good this is going to be on, on camera. But um, this little ADM bracket right here. Yes. And I love this thing. Um, one of the thing about this is, is that it's got its own built-in rotator. <laughs> okay. So, wait, wrong way. Um, yeah, well, this way. Okay, so this piece right here 
Oh, good God. Rotates the camera. Doesn't it just? Anyway, you know, up to about, uh, what is it, 45 degrees? Well, it's loads, isn't it? Because you don't need loads because you can always flip your image, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need all that, but um, uh, he, he just put a... That's a incredible. Link. He just yeah. put a link on this. So I'm wondering what this says here. Okay. It says content's not available right now, so I'm not seeing anything <laughs> on that. It looks like they took the link down. How annoying. Um, all right, well, we'll just have to see if... Uh, if Neef, uh, you know, it's only a month away, so we'll see. Yeah, well, a lot can ch I know a lot can change with this thing. Uh, yep, a lot, a lot can, change can change in a month. Yeah, but um, anyway, uh, it's eleven o'clock already. It's four o'clock over there. Yeah, sure is. I guess I guess it's nearly that time. Yeah, it's it's just about that time. I guess. Let me just see if there's any more. Should we take a last question? Uh, let's see. Uh, so targets as bright as you can possibly get. Bright is best, but it's also going to be boring because everybody's done all the bright stuff already. Go find find something that floats your your boat. Don't be swayed too much by uh, popularity. Although I must get the witch's head nebula at some point because everyone else has got that and I haven't. Yeah, I'd like uh, that one. Um, let's see. Nicole said, uh, oh, I just meant we'll probably go for a cooled CCD when the, sh when the shutter runs out on the DSLR, it's way good. over its expected shutter count. <laughs> so, that <laughs> happens it, to go quick when you're doing astrophotography, yeah, that shutter just keeps on going. Doesn't um, it? Eric said he saw a face mask selling for hundreds of dollars on Amazon, yeah. I don't think they make any difference. They're supposed to make a difference holding it in if you've already got it. If you've already uh, got it, put a face mask on to keep it in. Right, that's what I heard. If you, if it doesn't help you it. if you're trying to stop. If you're trying it to stop the virus, yeah, you're trying to stop it coming it in. No, it won't do. It won't, yeah. won't work. It won't work. Yeah. So, I mean, we're all still learning about this disease or virus, whatever you want to call it. We're all still learning about it. Yeah. You know. People are still don't, don't know what to make of it. And just like the same thing when SARS came out or... Oh, totally. You know, I, I wouldn't decry anybody for wearing whatever level of no, protection no, they no, makes them feel comfortable. You know, uh, you know, people that have kids at home and stuff like that. Kids are very vulnerable to this, so just be careful. Yeah. You know, older people, your mothers, your fathers, just be careful. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Eric said Dark Nebula. Go. <laughs> dark, oh, every time. Oh, the, the dark shark was one that I had a crack at um, earlier on this season. Really, nearly intended. I suppose we should start calling it next season now. Um, in 2019, I had a go at the dark shark twice, and oh, really? that really turned me on to 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 dark nebula. Uh, ah, fab fabulous stuff. Now, but, did you uh, do that in narrowband, or did you do that in uh, RGB? I did that in RGB. I did a okay. test with, um, I was playing with some Astrodon filters actually, and I was super impressed about how they were able to, to pull out that much from what, what is effectively nothing there. In, in fact, it's one of those, um, one of those targets where there is absolutely nothing there until you start processing it. You just have to go by some stars. Yeah. No, yeah. Nothing in the subs until you start stacking it together. So it's quite, quite an interesting one. But yeah, must must try harder on that. I know Eric's a lot more advanced than I am. So uh, yeah, he's actually mm. shooting the. Uh, he's actually his current project is is the Shark Nebula. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? Oh, well done, Eric. And uh, he's shooting it with a sixteen hundred and a Roman yeah. on one thirty five. Oh, oh, okay. So a bit in, in a huge That's, context. Yeah. Yep. Mm, very nice. Look forward to that. Mark's leaving the whole virus up to the media. Yeah, People me will be too. Wearing space suits to avoid the virus. Drink later. to that, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, I don't know if anybody's got any other uh, comments. We'll, we'll we'll hang around for another, uh, I guess, another five minutes, mm -hmm. and uh, see if anybody else has got any ideas. Uh, what about uh, 
Thanks for checking in, Nicole, from Scarborough. Nice to see another Brit up. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know where George is from, but George, uh, uh, George, thank you for subscribing to the, the YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Um, Mark, uh, Mark's a long time guy. We know, we know Mark. We know Eric. Uh, Nicole, I know Nicole. Uh, for anybody else I don't know that's been watching, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Tim appreciates it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and ask questions. Tap, tap, tap away, get involved, ask us stuff, or uh, tap away um, in the Backyard Astro Imaging Club. Just ask things, post things, interact. Otherwise, it will all fall to pieces. Without you, there is no club. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, we need people, and we need like-minded people to help grow the club, mm. um, help continue the the... the the, uh, the the spread of knowledge and, and the love of astronomy and the love of astrophotography that we all seem to have, that we all want to... The more you guys post, the more everybody learns, including yeah. us. So Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I've, I've learned from our chats that uh, this, this evolved, Astro World evolved, because we started chatting together and, uh, yeah. and bouncing things, and um, it made sense to, to stream it. Yeah, I, I make notes. I make this is this is no different to a normal chat with that, that Dan and I have during the week. I'll make notes. But what are my notes today? I've got Telescopia, so that was George. Um and Adam Block Studios, that was you, yeah. Dan. Yeah. Um and Joanne Burnett is from Townsville, Queensland. Hey Joanne. Yeah. Townsville, Queensland. Oh my word, right over the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, over. Hey there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see anybody from Long Island today. I don't think so. You know, but uh, that's okay. We got people from all over the place. Mm. Um, I admire your knowledge and dedication. At four a.m., Tim. Thank you again. Sweet dreams from Nicole. Oh, cheers, Nicole. Yeah, and to you. And to you, you know how it is. You've got to get. If you wake up in the night, you've got to go and see if there's any stars. And if there are, you might pop the roof of the observatory and just have a little scoot around, test the sky quality. And before you know it, you're chatting to Dan, and uh, the next thing you know, you're live streaming. Yeah, there you go. Hey, hey if you guys ever want to come on the show too, mm. oh, that'd be great. To come that'd on, be great fun. You know, we could add a third person. So, I mean, that's not a problem as long as you have a decent, uh, a semi decent computer with good internet. You know, we could have you guys on. Mm. So, uh, if you just want to sit there and talk and whatever, it's, 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 we could do all that. Um, yeah, that'd be really good. George just sent us Warren Keller's site, which I know this is a good site. Mm. Um, uh, it's uh, ip4ap.com. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, that one I've been on. I, Warren Keller's is is very well known. known. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got got his. Uh, I've got edition too. Billy Brown's on from Ron Conkoma from Long Island. There we go. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Billy. Um, but um, I, I guess you know we, we got about two more minutes. I guess you know. But uh, what's your next to... target after the half, Dan? What well, you, actually, what I actually after? started my next target. Um, and oh, I started. Oh, yeah. With the flaming star. Oh, you're on the flaming star. Where the yeah. flaming the hell is it, Nebula? Yes, yeah, the flaming exactly. star. I wouldn't know where it was. Thank God for plate solving. Right, <laughs> so right, right. so um, I was able to fit the, the, the swoop, you know, the oh, yes. swoop with the flaming star, and yes. the, the bottom nebula where, you uh, know, you know, yeah, I'm able to fit kind of the both of them. Right, so, yes, yes, yes. It's a, so, it's a funny uh, shape, isn't it? Yes, there's a swoop and a, and a sticky out bit. Yeah, it's a little, right. little, little, I call it the Nike swoosh. Ah, okay, the swoosh. <laughs> gotcha. So, uh, if I, if I, uh, let's see. That, in actual fact, that's perfect Esprit 80 territory, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you know, and it fits, uh, it fits well. Mm. Um, if Bet I, it uh, I'll show you, this is not my picture, so, um, of course, when I do Flaming Star, it shows the Elvis Presley movie first. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> so I got to add Nebula, and we'll do images. And you'll see what it looks like. Um, let me see if I can find something similar to the 80. This is kind of similar to the 80 here. And if I can get it to come up. 
There we go. And here we go. So this is a flaming star. Oh, yeah. And I was able to fit, and I'm using the mask. So, is it, so if we're looking at this picture over here, um, this is pretty much what I got. Um, you got this the little backwards Nike swoosh. That's yep. what I call it here, the flaming star. And this piece down here with these nice, I love these three stars, four stars right yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, so very, yeah, very such rich. A and nice contrast here with the stars. Yeah. Um, you got a nice gold. It's like it's like a spread out Alberio kind of. Gotcha. So you, you know, you got the gold and the blue and another blue, and they're very prominent in in, in the picture. Uh, but whoever took this did a really good job. Did, of it. Didn't they? Didn't they? Yeah. So how are you going to be? How are you treating this one then, Dan? Is this an LRGB with a bit of HA thrown on the top? No, I'm, I'm just doing strictly narrow band on this one. Strictly narrow. And you know, in so, in the traditional three, yeah, yeah, main band. How much I'm gonna get out of the S two? Mm. I think this is mostly an HA emission. Um, yeah. But uh, unfortunately, you know, I've yet to find a cataloging, a listing of nebulas by emission types. Interesting. You know, and I've been trying to find one just so I know, like, I, I don't want to waste time if something doesn't have any, like, say, oxygen-3 in it. If, 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 we, if imaging at that wavelength does nothing, no good to the, to the image, then why Yes, the why, why spend, yes, X number of hours for, for yes, to get nothing. Yes, I hear you. I, I must admit, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to doing bicolor imaging for sure. that for that reason um and i'm i'm get i'm just literally guessing sticking my finger in the air and and guessing with with a blindfold i'm spinning around guessing what's got what that sounds like a very uh that would be a very useful list wouldn't it yeah you would think so so you'd mm. be sitting there and you'd be like okay you know what um, and it wouldn't be by a mission, I guess. I, you know, I guess you could kind of cross-reference at the end. Yeah. But you'd have, like, let's say, okay, hard nebula, IC1805, emits HOS. So you, do you think anyone's done this and we haven't stumbled across it, or is this is this something that we need to produce? Somebody, somebody's had to do it somewhere, but I just can't seem to find it anywhere. I'll have a little look. I'll have a little look for that. Um, yeah, that would be very, very interesting for me, actually. Uh, yeah, bicolor predominantly because it's a skill I need to master. I think I need to master because other people make it look so brilliant. But also that time-saving factor, this grotty weather, two two channels compared with, four. you know, four. yeah, precisely, four. yeah, compared yeah. to four. If well, you're doing in LRGB, you're doing four, you know. So. Well, how about this then for a topic for next time um, to 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 throw these ones around some is it trues is it true i read this in a book by someone who should know by an apod uh, master of the dark art that you can as long as your luminance channel is super sharp and lovely you can bin your rgb or subsequent color information two by two or it could be a bit smudgy or it could be a bit out of focus and it wouldn't make any difference as long as your luminance is absolutely spot on that you can save time or effort or consistency on your color channels and so that's something i want to look into with you so could we produce a good image using a one-shot color on one side for the rgb and a mono with a pin sharp l channel for instance could that speed things up so i'm thinking for next time about hybridizing ways of capture so remember i had my twin rig for quite a long time to speed up ways of capture so are, are there ways in the future that we can speed up capture to get as good an image as what i'm seeing there with uh, the flaming star but to do it more quickly or or do you think everything's now going to go down this route of um, glowless cameras where we're literally going to be uh, just taking our subs, stacking them, 
or maybe stacking them live and producing a picture like the one we see there without any any more flapping about do, do you think we're on the verge of a new era uh, well i don't think we're that that close yet i think we're you know because i've seen and it's of you with uh sharp cap with the live stacking um the picture's okay but yep. it's no way near as a uh, properly stacked and processed photo is going to be. It's not. It's not going to be close. However, um, I Agreed. do think that eventually the cameras will be sensitive enough, and the technology will get better and better. I'm. I'm probably in 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 our lifetime that will be. Maybe we won't be taking pictures. We might be on an oxygen tank. But I think that uh, you know. It's definitely well on its way. It's, I mean, look at what it's done in the past 10 years. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I, there's no way in, ha excuse me, there's no way that I was thinking that my rig would be totally computerized and I'm sitting outside, my, 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 my uh, telescope's outside, I'm inside watching things on a computer wirelessly yeah. without a wire coming in through a window. Yeah. You know, so did you I, see I, that ten years ago? No, I don't think any of us did. Mm. You know, mm. you know, it was mm. only for like, uh, you know, it was only for you know Mount, you know, Kit Peak, and you know all these places that were top of the line observatories. I mean, you didn't think about that. I, at least I didn't. Mm. I, maybe I'm a little bit, you know, you know, blindsided with what's in front of me. But I mean, I, ten years ago, you know, I was using what. A T three I on a Schmidt mm. on a mount, mm. you know, and now I'm using an mount, eighty yeah. millimeter on an EQ and doing everything while sleeping. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, so yeah, okay. But okay, so we were, so what do you want to talk about next week? I guess. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We talked about it now. What do you think? Or should we, <laughs> should, we, should, we should we throw it open? Or do you want to throw it open for um for 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 questions in the week for um. For uh, suggestions. All right, well, uh, up to yeah, you. Up to yeah, you, Dan. We could do that. We could do that, and we could do. Uh, let's see. Just in case nobody throws any suggestions out there. <laughs> um, so hi hybrid imaging systems, or or the future of imaging systems. I've got a few little things that uh, a few little projects up my sleeve coming up, which okay. I'd like to, which I can, I'd like to, I can talk about. Yeah, I just I, I would definitely you know love to talk about how things are going backwards from these big telescopes to you know people are using these now, you know. Yes. So, you know the the, yeah. the the reverse kind of thing has been going on now. Yeah. Because, you know, but we can talk about that too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. You got, a, you got a bunch of stuff going on. Mm. So yeah, we can definitely. do that absolutely. Oh, oh, these 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 little ones have become. These are just such good fun. These put a real big smile on my face. Yeah. Just as I mean, I know a C fourteen would put a big smile on my face with the wow factor and the kudos, sure. but it also put that a big, big load of strain on my sciatica and and my bank balance. And does does is it is it going to give me as much of an endorphin release as <laughs> as a twenty quid lens from a car boot sale and a three hundred quid camera with a very yeah. sensitive chip? So I don't know. Yeah, yes, there's there's a lot more choice now. That's that's for sure. We can touch on that next week too, couldn't we? It's, it's a broader. There isn't. Uh, you've got an SCT or you've got a refractor, and that's the choice. You, there's a huge, the raft of choices that we've got for stuff now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, it's huge, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So we'll, we'll work on that. Now I may, I may actually. Try and get somebody else on here that knows a little bit Brilliant. about that. Brilliant. Oh, yeah, yeah. A, 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 an outreach person. Because <laughs> <laughs> outreach, that... small stuff, new stuff. What? Uh, no, he, he is definitely a, a ZWO connoisseur. Oh, really? Um, oh, good. Interesting. But, uh, he has a bunch of different rigs that he does a lot of really good stuff with. So, so okay. we will see. Uh, actually, uh, Eric Watson wants to know if we could chat about the new uh, Rasa systems, the F2 systems. Well, you haven't got one, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> you do? <laughs> <laughs> Eric can come on and chat about the I, new I, Rasa systems. I know one person that has one, and oh, well, I don't even know him. 
but I know right. that he has one. That's Chuck Ayub from. Uh, oh, Chuck! Oh, was Chuck. Chuck's got one now, right? Yeah, okay. Chuck's got an eight inch Rasa. Nice, and Eric. Eric does. Um, and Mark said he's interested in maybe using my five hundred millimeter Nikkor with my two ninety four. That would be interesting. Yeah, it will. Yeah, approve of that. Yeah, give that a shot. That's a nice. That's a decent sized chip for that too. Just a little mm. bit bigger than my scope, but uh, yeah, Eric. Eric is laughing. <laughs> well, he is. <laughs> He's well, salted. It's 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 nice to know that we can make people laugh, even if it's at our own expense. So <laughs> so, so um, uh, it's uh, let's see. We're running at a lot. This is the longest show to date. This is two hours and twenty one minutes with the preview stuff. So it's probably about two hours and fifteen minutes right now. But um, I, I think Heavy. it's time to let you go to bed. Every day. All right, dude. <laughs> All right. So, and I've been, I've been adding, I've been, you know, I've been saying a tagline, so I'm just going to say it, <laughs> you know. So, um, I, I, if you guys have known me and seen, seen me on other things, I always had a tagline of keep shooting, keep educating, keep having fun. Um, cool. that, that's what it's all about. Always ask questions, but don't get frustrated. Get out there if you're, come with a bunch of bad shots keep on shooting it's just gonna get better tim will tell you the same thing i'll tell you the same thing just get back on the horse do it it's definitely rewarding when you get that shot that you're like wow that looks great and um that'll be it for tonight uh so next week we'll talk about different types of imaging systems and the future of uh future of imaging as as we see it and um that's it. So, Tim, parting words? Okay. Night, everybody. Thanks for staying up with us, and uh, I'll see you very soon. See you next week. Short and sweet. Love it. <laughs> okay. Dan, thanks for hosting us again, mate. No, absolutely. Anytime. We love doing this. And, again, we'll see you again next week. It's going to be back to Wednesday nights, 9 o'clock. This was just a special Thursday night show. So, Wednesday night, 9 o'clock. Tim will crawl out of bed at 2 a.m. and uh, be his lovely, cheerful self. So um, thank you, guys, and we'll catch you guys on next Wednesday. Okay. See you next Remember, week. Take care. I'll see you next week. See you, Dad. Night-night. Bye-bye. Night-night. Bye. -bye. Night -bye. Bye.